Can I tell you something? Yeah. I, I made it. Oh, oh you yeah. fucking I asshole. Was, I was behind it. Yeah. All right. That I makes sense. Yeah, something that makes was sense. Up. Yeah. <laughs> On today's part of my take, we have NFL Week 6 preview. We have Julian Edelman in studio. We have a very special interview with X Factor, the Kansas City Chiefs superfan, from the fight that he had against Red Extreme on Sunday. Get his side of the story. Also, he's probably the most famous guest we've ever had on the show. Uh, we have Fantasy Fuckboys. We have Firefest of the Week, a great Friday episode sending you into the weekend. And we're brought to you by our friends at Black Rifle Coffee. Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee to people who love America. Uh, you know that I love coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. You can see the coffee memes every day. Well, Black Rifle coffee is some of the best coffee out there they've also donated more than six million cups of coffee to deployed soldiers law enforcement and medical workers through their signature buy a bag give a bag initiative so black rifle coffee imports high quality coffee beans from all over the world and they roast five days a week at their facilities in manchester tennessee and salt lake city utah and the team at black rifle coffee is continually researching and experimenting with new roasting methods and coffee origins the best way to enjoy Black Rifle Coffee is by joining the coffee club. You pick your perfect roast, how much and when you want it delivered to your door, and we take care of the rest. It's free to sign up, and you get your free shipping, discounts on partner brands, and early access to new products and club-exclusive products. So go to BlackRifleCoffee.com, use code TAKE, use code TAKE today, and get the freshest coffee in America shipped to you. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Black Rifle Coffee. Go to blackriflecoffee.com slash take right now. Today is Friday, October 15th, and uh, PFT, I think this podcast just got a whole hell of a lot hotter. Yeah, Billy's here. Yeah, Billy's here, but uh, we also have a very special guest, something we've never done before. Julian Edelman, our good friend, watched Thursday Night Football with us, just hung out, guys being dudes, and we said, you know what? Let's not do a traditional interview. Let's have him on for the uh, post-game recap. So here he is, Jules. What's up, guys? I, I love it. What's, You're electric. What's going on? Yeah. Um, so if you if you miss Jules is on uh, Inside the NFL now. Streaming um, on Paramount Plus. How far Paramount how far Plus. inside the NFL do you get? Knuckles you know. deep, wrist. You go B B deep. Yeah. B deep. B deep. <laughs> I, I like it. So I had it. Uh, if you if you missed it, Jules it's the shows is, the pros watch. Is the shows the pros watch, and he gives insight that you can't get anywhere else. Anywhere. Such as before the Bucks played the Patriots, he said that both Bill Belichick and Tom Brady wanted to win that game. Um, which I didn't realize until he said it. Well, it's true, isn't it? It was. It was true. That's is the it kind not? of. That's the insight that you get if you've played the game. Yeah. Hey, Jules, real quick question before we start talking about the game tonight. Um, Brady versus the Patriots, who were you rooting for? I was rooting for the Pats. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did that Did that maybe make Tom Brady a little... Yeah, I mean, my guy gets all... He's, he gets a little sensitive sometimes. Yeah, but that's fair because you... you He's your best friend. He's... He's my best friend, and would would he say that you're? I don't his think best he probably friend? would not anymore. <laughs> well, you never he definitely wouldn't. You anymore. never played for the Bucks, so to me that makes sense that you wouldn't like your allegiance don't transfer just because Tom's there, right? Definitely can't. I mean, why would I ever root? You're probably also just like secretly jealous that you're not on the Bucks right now. Yeah, absolutely not. You know, but, I enjoy my time. But so if if it were if the Bucks, I, I I think it's fair to say that you root for the Patriots over everything, and then the Bucks number two. If the Bucks aren't playing the Patriots, you're rooting for the Bucks. I'm rooting for the Ni Niners number two. Niners number Niners. two. Wow. Big Niners guy. Okay, Trey Lance. A little more of Jimmy G. I like the Niners. Okay, uh -huh. there we go. <laughs> I like Shanahan. I, think, I, I love Shanahan. I think he's a good coach. I, I like love the defense. Shanahan. Yes. I like Kittle, even though he's hurt right now. But I, I, I'm just a Niners fan. I grew up loving the 49ers. Yeah, yeah. We, that's we, fair. We got off to a little start ball busting here, so I, I'd like to actually compliment you on something on your bravery. You took a stand. You, you know, you retired this off season because there was going to be a vaccine mandate, and you think that every player is entitled to their own choice. <laughs> I thought that was. It's rare to see an athlete stand up for what they believe mm -hmm. in, put their money where their mouth is. So you know, like we we see that and we appreciate it. Yeah, too. you know, I. 
you know, there's someone's always got to walk for other people to run. Yeah, you <laughs> walk so Kyrie Irving could run. You know? <laughs> I'm vax though. Yeah, okay. double vax. Double, oh, double vax. Double vax. All right. So watching this game, it is fun to watch the game with you because you obviously know Tom Brady so well. And, uh, you know, they're running your offense, right? They're running basically you, – when you watch the game, because that's the story is that Tom Brady's basically running the offense and Bruce Arians, like his no risk it, no biscuit is a way of the past. So when you're watching the Bucks, are you like, yeah, I know exactly what they're doing and what they're trying to do? I mean, a lot of the time I, I can see what they're trying to get into uh, just because – if you're in a meeting with you know a guy that calls plays and the quarterback, they usually are gonna do what the quarterback likes to do, right? And you know you could see early on when Tom was in Tampa, they were kind of doing a lot diff a lot of different things that you know Bruce Arians is used to doing. And then now if you watch it, I mean we set up the run, then we hit the play action, let's hit seams if they're in single high. You know, let's hit a stopper route because we got receivers on the outside that are going to be able to, you know, marry those routes up. So, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that we did. They get into empty a bunch, formation indicators with the running back. I mean, it's a lot. Of, it's copycat league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Copycat league. Yeah. And you, you were calling out some of the routes that the receivers were running. You were saying, like, indigo or some other, like, key words that, that you guys used. Are they, do they still use those same words? In I don't know. I that That's one thing I don't know. Um maybe yeah I, I i don't i don't know what uh what system or scheme or if because there's a number system which is the west coast and that's where arians is from i think and then uh i should know that i think i don't actually where's he, where's he from so he, I mean, he's he came he came life. from alabama he, bear bryant but then he was in the steelers he, was, he called he plays was, for the steelers for he's actually not a west coast years. guy yeah I need to take that back okay stricken from the record temple kansas city chiefs he's, he's, Andy he's literally been everywhere Andy Reed. Uh, was not, there? No, it wasn't. No. It was way, way long ago. Way, way long way ago. Way long ago. Yeah, way long ago. Who was the head coach? Was it Marty? Uh, yeah, it was. It was yeah. He was with the Colts. He was with the Browns. He was with the Steelers. So he's probably got a bunch of stuff. So I don't know what he's running, mm -hmm. but he probably has words that they incorporate that are probably similar. Yeah, I mean, they're running. Tom Brady is basically running whatever he wants at this point, I would imagine. I mean, the guy's been in the league for... 22 years. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, he's older than the offensive coordinator. And yeah, it, as, it's as crazy. Far as, uh, and he's beat him every time he's played him, I think. And yes. the, the stuff like Antonio Brown adds to the offense is just crazy. Oh, yeah. When he's not falling down, he slips a lot. I've noticed that about him. He needs to change his cleats or, or do something different with that. But he looks like he looked, you know, five years ago. Does he, like, to you, to your eyes, do you see, has he slowed down? He at all? looks electric. I mean, he, he stays in shape. I've, I was around him for. You know, two weeks and got to know him a little bit. And he eats, breathes, and lives, you know, football and taking care of his body. And, you know, he's a, he's a freak. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's still performing at a very, very high level. Now, did, did Tom ever invite you to live with him? No, mm. he didn't. Mm. That's got to sting a that little hurts. bit. It hurts. That yeah. does. That really does hurt. That does hurt. That Being has like to the hurt. Kato Kalen of Tom Brady's house. Yeah. yeah. That but, does hurt. Yeah. Hey. Uh, speaking of hurt, we got to at least mention uh, the end of this game was an all-time spread and uh, total debacle with Cameron Brait falling an inch in front of the line or behind the line, third no. down. This Field was goal. also your welcome to gambling because I, I, I mean, I knew this was fucked. Like in the in like the the third quarter, I was like, this game's probably fucked because of how the game was flowing. But that was. That's how. That's what we have to deal with. So you now are in our lives. You're yeah, in the content I, life. I don't have any. You know, I don't. I'm not putting actual money. This is more for pride of, of trying to win on inside the NFL. In, on inside the NFL. But so you're you're in our life now. Of you watch football all day on Sunday. Is it harder than playing the actual games? I think it is. Yes. Thank you. I think it's thank harder because I, I. You have to remember people's names. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get stats. Sore on the couch. There's so many games going on at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get like almost CTE kind of. Yes. Uh huh. Just yes. From like your eyeballs going here, or there. To the floor where your TV is because you. Especially somehow this don't... setup. This yeah. setup was six TVs. You've never seen six TVs in the same room. Well, usually they're they're like on the floor. Yeah. And uh -huh. One on the wall and then the kitchen. <laughs> you know we have a we have a plethora of areas that have TVs. You in got my a bathroom area. TV. 
No, we don't. But that's what I bring in if you if you watch my episode of Cribs, which was uh, hilarious. If you got it, you, you go watch six it. Inch, the six inch, you bring it. There you go. You know, when you have the ticket, you could just bring it anywhere. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. But um, so so how have you enjoyed though, like content life, like actually, obviously playing the NFL is harder than blogging, but watching football for twelve hours on Sunday is exhausting, wouldn't you say? It is. You know, it's mentally draining. And then coming up with takes and coming up with, you know, your well, view of things. You just have to listen to our I podcast. Just, yeah, that's I mean, how you come up with your takes. I come up with my Steal take. Just, I listen to Billy football. <laughs> yeah. He's the smartest guy out No, he gives you gold. You uh, know, he does. By the way, Billy, so when Jules came, he came right before kickoff, and he told Billy uh, that Fireman Ed had been traded to the Patriots. And Billy believed him. <laughs> um, and it was, it was a tough moment for our boy Billy because it was, it was a tough moment. Billy D- came up A- to me. Yes, T- pats, pats, pats. <laughs> Billy came up to me. He's like, it was kind of awkward with Jules. He's like, why? What happened? He's like, well, he told me Fireman Ed got traded, and I believed him. <laughs> so, Billy, are you okay? Have you recovered? I didn't really believe him. I just didn't really want to stop him and correct him. Yeah. But- Oh, you were being oh, okay. nice. Oh, yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit. He was doing a bit on you, Jules. Was, Is that a bit? He was trying to bit on me, and I was just sort of. Are you calling me a bitty? <laughs> we're all bitties. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about uh, Jalen Hurts real quick. Yeah. yeah. The other quarterback tonight. I, I about halfway through the game, I realized that when he drifts in the pocket, when he panics and starts to scramble, it's fine if you scramble. You keep your eyes downfield. You're able to like actually extend the play. He drifts in the most unproductive angles. He runs like backwards into the sideline, then tries to throw the ball away. Uh, but he's had a couple games where he's played well. I just, I'm, I'm not buying Jalen Hurts. If he's a stock, I think I'm selling all my stock that I, I have in Jalen. Hurts. Yeah, I, I think I'm sticking with what I said on Monday: is that he's Mister Right Now, not Mister Right. What would I get it on the price at? Uh, I would give you well. See now, if he's a backup, if he's going to move to be a backup, then his stock goes back up. But let's just call it fifty cents right now. So what did I get in it? So you got in at seventy five cents. So I'm down a little. You're down. You've lost money. Do you cut ties at this point? Or nah, do you wait for I'm, him to I'm come a hold. Back up? I'm a hold. Okay. I'm gonna hold my stock, and I'll, I'm still gonna see if if they can get some things cooking. I didn't particularly love the play calling that was going on, uh, it, and they were having protection problems. They were, you know, Shaq Bear. He was running them down, and and when you run. And guys are just as fast as you. You're not going to be able to slow up to turn your shoulders to get you in the right position to make throws. And we saw that with his throwing. It it just there was no rhythm to this offense today. Mm. That is a good point because I think all of our brains have been corrupted by uh, watching college football and then playing video games where we think uh, you can just like sprint at a full sprint and then just throw the ball. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And I mean. That defense, that defensive front for Tampa Bay is is pretty electric, and they were they were struggling trying to block them, and we saw that. And like PFT said, I mean, if you're going to scramble, you know, at least try to scramble with your eyes downfield. And it didn't really look like he was doing that as much because the pressure was on him so so often. Yeah, yeah. Is there no. is there any Good play point. that is more demoralizing or like will slow down an offense faster? Then if you throw like two wide receiver screens in a row and they both go for one yard or negative one yards, because that to me that's what the Eagles playbook looked like tonight. Yes, it was like we're either going to do an inside handoff, which they had some success in later on in the game, or we're going to try to like just hammer this wide receiver screen thing. Yeah, they they, they tried a lot with that the wide receiver screen, but I mean the defense of the Bucks, those guys sideline to sideline can run at all positions. So I, you know, it was a tough one for them. That was a tough game. I mean, that's the defending Super Bowl champions. So, you know, that, as as Philly was probably saying going into this, this is going to be a measuring stick game, and they held their own. I mean, they they beat me. They they covered. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So they, they technically may have won. Um, and a lot of hearts. That is yep. true. Great teams, good teams win. Great teams cover. Exactly. That's a saying. That's that's a, that's a saying for a reason. I have a question about the Bucks. So the Bucks secondary is banged up. Mm-hmm. When you were playing, if you're playing a banged up secondary. And you don't like the Eagles weren't able to expose it at all. Are are you just like what the hell happened? Like do you, do you go into a game when you know there's a bunch of injuries on the other side? Like we should have a field day against these guys. I I never like overlooked my opponent, even if we were playing banged up guys, because I was superstitious like that. 
but in theory, yeah, you you should probably do better, right? But that that's if you can, you know, get get things protected. And Tampa Bay was was all over Jalen Hurts. I mean, we were we were sitting there watching like this yeah. guy's scrambling to his right every play, yeah, every play, every single play. And then you know the the defensive backfields, or the de- defensive backs that they did have. I mean, those guys were wired a lot of the times down there. Yeah. Yeah, no, they were. I mean, there was a point in time when it felt like the Eagles receivers were playing more defense than the Bucks defenders because they were yeah. a lot of the throws were kind of off or the defenders were right in good positions. So, I mean, it was tough for the Eagles. I, I still – I'm actually surprised that they made it a six-point game because it felt like it should have been a lot more. It, it did feel like an ass-kicking even when they were covering the spread. Right. The it was like this game has felt like a blowout. It never – it never felt like the Eagles weren't because they never really got any points when they needed points in the game. Right, and they all sh- came when they were, you know, when they were down pretty bad. And shout out Nick Sirianni for understanding math for going for two down fourteen late. Yeah, he took the pen out of his hat. So I, if, I, if if I had known that the pen was out of his hat, I would have put more money on the Eagles. A tell. Yeah, yeah. The, the pen's gone. He's taking the training wheels off. Yep, and the numbers on the hat too. The, the numbers yes. on that. So he had the numbers of the players that were out. One was Lane Johnson, yep. sixty-five, and there were two other guys it's that like were out in memoriam for the season. It's, it's very like, weird. It's like they died. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what he Nick Sirianni. You know what he does? He like always is in a constant state of trying to be the opposite of Ben Simmons. Yeah. And like really ingratiate himself to the city of Philadelphia. He's yes. Like, well, if they like me a lot, then I won't get fired. But a big key in that is also winning football games. Yeah, when they, they played Dallas, he was be- wearing like a beat Dallas shirt. And tonight he was wearing a, a Dr. J jersey before the game. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so he's Yeah, he's I think a that's Philly's smart enough to uh-huh. know, like, there's... Listen, you could maybe wear a beat Dallas shirt on the first day, and that will get you some, some like, juice. But, like, I'm telling you right now, Big Ant is not going to be on, on the call tomorrow being like, yeah, it's, it, well, he wore a Dr. J jersey. It's okay. The Eagles are, what, one, two and four? You know what he's going to say? He's going to be like, he doesn't deserve to wear the Dr. J yes. jersey before the game. Yes. You don't, You need to win first before you can do that. Yes. The defense pretty did it, did pretty well, though. Yeah, the, the Eagles defense. Eagles defense did yeah. pretty well. Yeah, I mean, they, they were getting pressure on Tom a little bit, and they had some key stops. They just didn't capitalize on them. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that... I'm not asking you to be a traitor here by divulging any of this information, but how do you beat Tom Brady? Hmm. I know the answer. Big Cat knows the answer. Yeah. You got to get him off the spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, no, in a way, in a way, yeah. You're close. You got to get him off the spot. Keep going. Keep going. Pressure. How do you get him off the spot? Pressure up the middle. Four. With how many? How many linemen? Uh, I like to p drop. If you could p drop and put max coverage, and then disguise very well. Which is hard to disguise against Tom because he's seen all the disguises. But if you can somehow mess with like his formation indicators, like Indianapolis did to us, like six years ago or th- four years ago, where they would have a man indicator, but then it wouldn't be man. Mm-hmm. They they drop into like a, a cover six or something. Those are the things that like you don't prepare for. Okay. And, and so Big Cat has has a way to do it yeah, too. Yeah, you, you got pressure with four. If you get pressure with four, got to get home. Yeah, you got heat him up. You heat him up with four. Then you put max coverage. Yeah, you yeah. heat him up with four, and it's, then you put, it's then lights you put, out. Then you gotta, then you gotta, uh, then you gotta double like a, a good player. Yeah, yeah, I yeah would, of course. I, I would just say, well, you yeah. got, yeah, you got to bracket Gronk. <laughs> you got to bracket Randy Take, Moss. You got to bracket all, Wes Welker. It was always cover the, five. Yeah, cover five. Gotta, it was just the best. The, the cover best. five is two man. So then you have two. So you're taking away the seams. This is uh-huh. really though how like the media would talk. Yeah, of They'd course. be like. They'd be like, Tom Brady lost, you know, two Super Bowls, and he's won seven, or he lost three. But like, what? What's the recipe? You gotta, you gotta get home with four. It's like, well, yeah. If every team could do that, that mm-hmm. would be great. Yeah, if every team has <laughs> Michael Strahan <laughs> and OC Manure, Manure, that helps. Yeah, that would be sick if we could get pressure with four. Yep. Um, have you? Do you have uh, any communication with Bill Belichick since that you retired? I feel like he's the type of guy who like warms up to you immediately when you're not. You're you're no longer his responsibility. No, well, you know, I I did have a couple things on on the show inside the NFL where I was kind of mocking him. Or or oh, you did it. You did a voice. Yeah, I did a voice. Yeah, couple impressions. Yep. And uh, so when I went back, I went back there for a game. I saw him, 
And like, I'm like, you know, hey, coach. And I didn't know how to react because he said something in the media. Greg Hill called him out and was like, hey, you hear about Edelman impersonating you? And he goes, yeah, he gave one of his snarks. Uh-huh. Just did just it again. Did, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, so, and so, like, I'm kind of sweating. I'm on the sideline before the game and coach comes up and I'm like, hey, coach. You know, I'm just kind of like messing around. Like, oh, yeah, you're all right. You know, you know? I'm like, oh, we're good. We're golden. That means, you know, I, I, I got to see where the line's at. Yeah, I got to uh-huh. see where the line's at. And I guess I haven't hit that line yet. Yeah. But, um, no, it, it was so crazy. So I retired this off season, and I haven't seen him. And I end up going to uh, some little shindig, and he was there. And... Like, it's been publicized that I was doing inside the NFL for, like, five months. And so he looks at me and goes, hey, so, like, what are you up to now? (laughs) I'm like, I'm doing inside the NFL. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, you're doing media? (laughs) And I go, "Uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be kind of fun. I didn't know what I could say to him. Right. You know, he's, he's scary. He's intimidating. And so he goes, now look, like, you can't be a homer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. He's like, like feeling you out. Yeah, yeah. He, like, he's like, are you going to keep you, your you, mouth shut? No, he goes, he goes, like, if you have to motherfuck us, you can motherfuck us. Oh, like, that's awesome. And so, like, yeah, but it felt like like a mafia meeting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you were like, but that's. But it was cool. You yeah, know, like, like I actually would have, when you start telling that story, I would have thought that Belichick would be like, hey, don't say anything about nah. son. But that's but he that's perfectly like, Belichick yeah. to be like, no, you have to you have to be truthful and honest because that's the only way we'll get better. Exactly. He's and telling you do your job. Yeah. yeah. He was telling me to do <laughs> <Yeah>. my job. <laughs> that's so perfect. Yeah, it, but it was like, it was fresh out of a movie. Like I was at a Bronx Tale in like an Italian restaurant and like I see the old mob boss yeah <laughs> that's it'd, fucking it'd just be fantastic. a real shame if somebody were to say anything about the time that they spent here mm-hmm. it'd be a shame yeah yeah have a good night julie yeah, yeah. if this, he, t- if he this just starts me. reading yeah. your parents address to you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is, your, yeah is, your, is your dad still yeah at- <laughs> is frank still at this place <laughs> no nah, he he's still a good i mean he's actually you know he's he's a personable guy when you get him in the right environment yeah mm-hmm. you know? yeah are you going to uh, – my last question, then we'll get to Billy's uh, couple questions here, uh, and then we'll get to our weekend preview. So are you going to read the Seth Wickersham book? No. What is – what? You know, it's the, better you, to you be know feared. Book. Yeah. Better to be feared. You yeah. lived it, so you don't really need to read it. Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> Not a book, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Now that's a Belichick answer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's Belichick still having his grips on Jules. <laughs> if he had told you, like, when you met him on the field, if he had, if he had been like, you know, a little bit upset about the impressions or whatever, and he'd been like, "Take a lap, Jules." Do you think, like, instinctively, you would have start jogging? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> how far? How many, Coach? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I got you. Um, uh, I, I, I do have one last actual yeah, yeah. football question. The new quarterback, Mac Jones. Yeah. What's oh, your yeah. read on him? What's your read on on old Mackie? I think he's doing well, McCorkle. I, I think he's doing well. I mean, they're not doing great. I mean, their their red area offense needs some help, and then they need to they need to create some more explosion plays. But as far as seeing, you know, a kid come in and retain the offense and see what plays they're running and see his quarterback clock and his clicking ability from certain reads, it's been pretty impressive. And and guys that I've talked to that are still there are impressed with him and how he's been able to digest the playbook and, and the offensive scheme. So, you know, it's exciting for him. And I think he just needs to – he's got that kind of, like, even-keeled, like – cool collect kind of attitude if you if you mm-hmm. you see him you know what i mean and if he continues that you know i think the big plays will will come and and he'll learn how to play and there's there's games within games that you know once you get the offense down you, you can start doing those things and you know if he if he continues to improve and and believe in the system i think I think he's going to be a pretty good quarterback. It's really hard to have patience with like rookie quarterbacks, but you have to like constantly remind yourself. Yeah, but it's been like he hasn't made 
he hasn't made like real bad football plays. He's made a couple like doy doy plays. Yeah, <laughs> I like uh, that. I know which doy doy play you're you know talking I mean? about. Yeah, the one where he like he threw, threw it backwards. backwards. Yeah, like, yes, yes. But like he has doy doy plays. That's better than head scratchers. A doy doy so play is yeah, a great doy-doy. play. <laughs> but like it, it, we watch these other quarterbacks, and you, you oh like, yeah, Zach Wilson's got some doy doy plays. Oh, a lot of doy doy. <laughs> But also, I don't think the play calling has been as. as, as I agree well. with you. You know what I mean. I I think this. I think you could actually go down the list of like Justin Fields has had a couple doy doy plays. Yeah. And the offense hasn't but like also, fully stretched it yet for him. But also with like with what I'm most impressed about with Mac is his ability to like sidestep a guy in the pocket, step up, keep his eyes downfield, like we were you know talking about earlier today. And be able to deliver a ball that was like his fourth read that he went from his first to like his fourth because he saw it somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like those are things that you don't see very often from younger quarterbacks. That that calm, cool, collect and his pocket awareness. He's not mobile by any means, but like his ability to move in the pocket, step up when, you know, you the the guys are running the hump, the DNs are running the hump, you step up in the pocket, but you don't get all flustered and stuff you still stay in the read like he's been doing that you know he has a lot to improve on but he's he's got a good foundation going i like that the functional mobility that certain quarterbacks have yeah so like he's not going to set any rushing yardage records but no but he can move in the pocket in it's like, like tom tom's yeah. the goat at that like that's what tom's really insane at like having a sixth sense where you know all right oh he's they're gonna get him he steps up in the pocket he slides to his right then he finds his guy and he did you know he doinks it out yeah. yeah. I, I, am I wrong, though, to think that a team like the Patriots is a big advantage uh, for a quarterback that's going to give him help in training him to keep his eyes downfield? Because the way that I know that you guys coached up there and that you played is that if you're running the fourth option as a receiver, you're running that route like you're the primary guy. Like, you don't take plays off at receivers, e- even if you don't think that the ball is going to come to you. If the play's designed to go to one guy, everybody is doing that. And I think on teams that – might not have the same amount of coaching or the same level of detail, you'll get guys that, that dog a couple routes here and there. I, I definitely think his ecosystem was the best out of all the rookies that are entering the league this year. Yeah. You know, just as far as – and and I could be – I'm not biased, but that's all I really know mm-hmm. because I was in that system. But also just how the team is built, the, the money that they spent, and the defense that they have, mm-hmm. and the coaches that they have. Like, you know those guys are going to be there for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stability there. Yeah, It's a stability there. Usually when you get a a fresh quarterback, you're getting a fresh coach, a new play caller. These You stink. Yeah. Right. There's there's a lot of, you know, variables. Yeah. All right, right, Billy. Doi doi questions? Yeah, go with some doi doi questions. Steve Belichick. Yeah. He's always seemingly messing with the media. But when we saw the tongue thing the other night, do you think, like, what do you think he's doing there? You think he's doing that on purpose, or do you think he just just does that during the game? He just does that. It's probably like his twitch. Yeah, like is is he's 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 a feisty guy. You know, Stevie. He's he loves football. He's a he's like a fiery guy. He's he's the guy that like in practice that would come up and like talk shit to me, like oh the defense got you on that play, and like we would be talking shit to each other, like wouldn't even like look at each other for a week, and then like all of a sudden be boys again, you know what I mean? Like he that's just how he is. He's 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 fired up. When Belichick was at Mac Jones's pro day, yeah, the whole time he just looked disappointed and shaking his head, and like totally threw a lot of people off of Mac Jones. Do you think he did that on purpose so he could pick him up? I don't know for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised. So that that would be in his repertoire. Dude, he's he's fucking. That's that's a, that's he's the ultimate Jedi. Jeez. Mind tricks. Wow, it's that deep. It's deeper than deep. Wow, <laughs> it's deeper than any of us know. Yeah, you he can't even explain how deep it's it is. It's Illuminati. Yeah. Uh, last question: <laughs> Do you think you can put up 135 more than I did? Last time we interviewed you. How many times did you put it up? I think I put it up 40 times. I don't know. Ooh. Well, it just happens it to just be so. Is that, is that, is that, yeah, yeah that's, that's weird. Oh, shit. 40 oh, times. oh, it is 135 right is it, I mean, oh. Did I make you do it? Yeah. 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 I know you've been working out. You've got mm. the trainer. You're using Hank's same trainer for boxing, right? Yeah. Am I? Yeah. Probably. What's her name? What's your trainer's name? <laughs> My boy Don <laughs> okay. over in Brooklyn. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right, good questions. You want to try? 
I don't know if I got it in me. All right, well, you're going to come back. You're going to come back. He basically lives next door now. Listen, hmm. do hmm. you have any best friends in the city? Hmm. Uh, you got a crew? Well, it was going to be Billy. He well, asked Billy say. if he live, where he lives in the city, and Billy was like, Jersey. And Jules just, he took out his phone and like cro- I saw him cross off <laughs> Billy. Oh, but I can, I can get here very fast. <laughs> Yeah, you, Billy, you need to take Bill, can you take Billy out one night just for I will just no, for yeah, us. as long as he yeah. just does you gotta you can't you gotta whatever happens gotta stay in no. the circle of Billy no yeah Billy Billy yeah. won't Billy's talk, the best tell liar of all of time <laughs> Bill if you ask Billy a question three times you'll get the truth any question <laughs> Billy would you do us like nothing Billy would you do us like nothing Billy would you do us like we went to <laughs> yeah, yeah right right that's exactly what that's exactly how uh, it would mm-hmm. go. But but seriously, Jules and I went fucking raging. <laughs> All right, well, I'm, we'll a, do I'm a father of one. I don't rage anymore. Yeah, I'm a dog mm-hmm. dad. There you go. You guys Huge. are basically the same. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what people people are like, oh do you have a dog? No, I have a kid. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, all right, so Jules will be back though because now that we realize he lives uh, not too far from the office, this was a lot of fun. And also, you got to anytime you want to watch television on a real screen. Yeah, you know the place to come. This was a great time, though. We watched the whole game. There was a little, there the was a little, uh, a little Wi-Fi outage in my area, so that's why. I really oh, that's, that's why you came by. Got to update your it. fancy router. There's a, we, every Who's, time I cut a, my cable, and it's kind of you know, it's it's kind of came back to be, bite me in the butt. You know, every time I stream storm, everything on Paramount Plus. Every time not, there's a storm, Jules is like, "Hey, what are you guys doing tonight?" <laughs> exactly. How's your fancy team doing? You said that you're playing fancy football for the first I time. I mean, Mike Evans didn't do anything tonight. Hmm. I was uh-huh. hoping. Yeah, yeah. Tell us more. Who else do you have? On we the really team? care. <clears throat> Tell us more. What's your worst beat so far this year? I'm, I'm not even good. Yeah. No. But why? Well, let us help you. Why? Why do you want to help me? We're experts. We, we, we love fantasy I thought you football. You don't care. No, we. I no, thought, we care. Yeah, I we, you don't no, that's just for Florida. Oh, yeah. We care about everybody else's team. <laughs> Everyone that's that's in the, the world. thing. Is like I actually. <laughs> yes. I really do love hearing. About I had McCaffrey. He got banged up. Yeah. He's questionable this week, though. Who's your quarterback? P. Holmes. Ah, P. Holmes. I like that. Let's he, start calling him oh, P. Holmes. Yeah, he P, hasn't P. been Holmes. great. Huh? No, he hasn't been great. And those picks have been hurting me. Yeah, they have. Minus I know. two? He, Minus he'll two? get it together. He'll get it together. Yeah. What's wrong with Patrick Mahomes? That's that's how you need to start making your takes. Yeah. Be like, I'm concerned about Patrick Mahomes. This yeah. isn't Did a blip we, on the Did we too radar. much too fast? No. Guys. Has the league figured out Patrick Mahomes? We're just giving Mahomes. you things to talk about Jules, inside no. the NFL. No, yeah, I tell, yeah. I tell you right now. Yeah. Were we too fast to anoint him? The cheat, like <laughs> the Chiefs, are built differently this year. They're a little banged up on off on defense. So yep. their defense isn't playing very well or well at all. And they have this stigma that like every time they're going to go out the offense, they're going to do a video game play. Mm-hmm. They need to have a little more long, methodical type drives. Make the easy just, play. Sometimes you got to make the easy pass. You know, and, and I I understand where they're at. There's been no, nah, there we haven't ever done that, but yeah. Maybe sometimes look at your receivers when you're throwing to them. The little he'll, stuff. He'll get it. I mean, what is he, 25? <laughs> yeah, no, no. We, ju- we actually are very much poking fun. He's the best quarterback in the league, and we like to just do this because it's a fun thing to have. He's a stud. A take. Th- this could make him stronger. Yeah, mm-hmm. there this it is. could make him stronger. Fuel. Hot take. Yeah. yeah. Or this, this could be the beginning him. of the end. This, no. Yeah, it could mm-hmm. be. You never know. What if he's never the same again? See, it's tough because I, I've been on a 2-3 and three team that went out and won the Super Bowl. So Was like, that the Trent Dilfer year? Yeah. The the Kansas City Chiefs. They're not Chiefs. good no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anymore. that's it. That's it. You They're know what over. I mean? So, like, you never know how a team reacts, and a team in September is never the same team in December. So if they continually, like, they just need to take care of the football. They, they've they been very reckless with the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're getting ne- too cute with it. Way, way too cute. Yeah. Okay, uh, here's a good headline ball, that, that we can make for Ball security job security, baby. There you go. Um how many more losses would it take for Bill Belichick to be on the hot seat? He'll never be on the hot seat. Ever? Ever. What if he doesn't win a game for the next four years? I don't think it's it's possible. But what if it happened? It, what if? Hot seat? It's, People have to be asking the question. Like, you haven't shown up for the last four seasons. What do we pay you to do? I don't I mean... I don't. I don't. I, I can't even fathom that. What if he? Okay. Uh, after a Thursday night game, he stays behind in the city and he goes out to a bar and a nice young lady is dancing next to him, and she encourages him to join her event that she has going mm-hmm. on. Um, and then a video leaks after a bad loss on the road. Mm-hmm. Hot seat. 
Bill Belichick. And he's an Ohio State hoodie. That's a tough seat. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a tough seat. Hot seat. So it's. I, I I don't know. It's I, I don't know. Nah. I, I you know that's. That's actually one that Bill might kill you for if you yeah. actually say like. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Bill is wearing out his welcome in New England. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I z- what? Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, before we get to our weekend preview, quick word from our friends at HelloFresh. HelloFresh. Fall can be ha- uh, hectic, but HelloFresh's recipes save time you'd otherwise spend on meal prepping, grocery shopping, and shopping so you can focus on getting back into the new routine and spending quality time with the family. There's nothing better than a home-cooked meal. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart and gourmet options providing plenty of variety fall is family time recipes like meatloaf a la mom and one pot broccoli mac and cheese make weeknight meals go off without a hitch it's quick and easy low prep one pan back uh, it's probably like 10 to 15 minutes and it's all home cooked hello fresh so get better value hello fresh is over 30 percent cheaper than grocery stores with pre-proportioned ingredients that ensure you won't spend money on excess food i know that when they sent me my hello fresh uh dinners it just felt good because you cook it takes very little time it tastes good you don't you get out of the rut of always ordering online and and uh eating stuff that may be not so healthy for you so hello fresh is the best place to get yourself Together with some home-cooked meals this fall, go to HelloFresh.com slash PMT14. Use code PMT14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh.com slash PMT14, PMT14, for 14 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, it's the number one, uh, America's number one meal kit. So check them out again, HelloFresh.com. Uh, slash PMT14. Okay, week six. Boys, we are one-third of the way into the season. Week six. Week six. It's crazy that we're already here. I don't like it when you say that sort of thing. Well, it, it I It reminds me of when they tweet out, like, this is the last time that the sun's going to set before 7 p.m. until March. Which, by the way, remember that your clocks change on Sunday morning. Saturday night, Sunday morning this week. 2 a.m. Yep, so make sure it's uh, fall back. So fall. we gain an hour. We gain an hour. Spring spring forward, fall, fall back. back. So we gain an hour, so mm-hmm. make sure you adjust your clocks. Uh, just a little PSA out there. Don't want to be the person who shows up late for the games on Sunday because you didn't or actually you show up early. Early well it's going to be a, an early kickoff in yeah. in London yes. so make sure that you fall back get that extra hour of sleep. Yep. Um okay so uh week 6 what are the standings at Jake? PFT and I had a big week 3 and 1. The Lunder stopped me from going perfect okay. after an 0 and 4 week. Uh Big Cat, Billy Liam 2 and 2, uh-huh. Hank 0 3 and 1. Ooh. Um right now Big Cat 13 and 7, Hank in second at 11 8 and 1. PFT and Billy tied at eleven and nine. Liam and I tied at eight and twelve. So go ahead, Liam, Jake. Rock paper scissors shoot. It looks so like Hank Liam I, won, Liam so it'll be Hank and Jake. Yep. Hell yeah, playing golf. Hell yeah, all and the way across the winter. country. No, yes. no bad blood there. I love it. Not at all. None at all. A car Zero. filled with sportsmanship. Yes, yep. just so much sportsmanship. <laughs> yeah. Stuffed with sportsmanship. Um, all right, let's get into the games then. Uh, quick, oh, uh, my current BCS rankings have the Cardinals and the Bills, one and two. Ooh, I don't Cardinals like Cardinals one? I don't like Cardinals that. One, I, no. You can't not have the Cardinals one with an undefeated no, record. they ain't played nobody. I got I got Bills number one, Chargers two, Cowboys three. But the Bucks BCS, four, strength these are, of these schedule are, doesn't factor these into are this. My, strength of schedule factors, but an undefeated team has to be number one until they lose. No, they're so like Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, the Cardinals are my Cincinnati. The under, under BCS rankings, Cincinnati would have been very confusing back in the day. Yes. No, these are these are so my rankings have Bills, Chargers, Cowboys, Bucks, Cards, then tied with all of them is is the Bengals because they can tie anybody. Got it. Uh, I yeah, I have the Cardinals until they lose. They have played someone. They played the Rams. They beat the fuck out of the Rams at the Rams. Uh, Aberration. And then the Bills have the fun fact about the Bills. They have uh, double the point differential than the next uh, than the second team not named the Cardinals. So the Cowboys have are plus uh, fifty three in point differential. The Bills are plus one hundred eight. Mm-hmm. Cardinals are plus sixty three. Yeah, so Bills. So they are fucking killing people. We we can agree Bills are should be at the top. Yes. Um. All right. So let's get into. Oh, also one thing I'm gonna throw out there for everyone. Uh, Hank, I know that you'll have some underdogs, but 
just I just went and looked through it because I wanted to give people something to think about. The top bets as of right now, money and uh, percentage of bets, the Bengals, the Packers, the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Rams, and the Cowboys. So think about that when you're going into Sunday because mm -hmm. half those teams will lose somehow because that's just how it works. Uh, Hank, you want to start with our favorite? Your favorite favorite. My favorite favorite. Uh, make sure you make your picks on the Play Barcel app, by the way. Picks can parlay. I think it's up to $30,000. Uh, my favorite is the – are the Rams favorite? The Rams are very big Yes. Favorites. All right. So I had Rams written down. Rams are my favorite. Minus 10 and a half. I Minus think it's nine, nine and a half. half. Nine yep. and a half. Minus nine and a half. Daniel Jones uh, can cuss but was reading a book on the flight back from uh, Dallas – to New York after his concussion, LeBron would never. Uh, so I don't know if that means – I don't think he's playing. I think he's going to play. He is. I think he's going to play, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So probably better. He's in the protocol right now. But Mike Glennon said that if need be, he will be ready to play also. Got it. Um, I'm just falling into the trap of too many points. It's a long trip. They have to travel east, early game east. Yeah. These are the things I tell myself when when convincing myself to bet against a heavy favorite like the Rams. Because the Rams do look – when they're when they're on – they're on. Yes. Um, but this feels like it could be just a, a weird Sunday. Not sure if they're going to lose outright, but I think that's a lot of points. Yeah, no, they're they're uh, one of the teams that I just mentioned in the most bet games. So that would tend to believe that maybe be the Giants that you'd want to bet on. But, mm -hmm. okay, so that's your favorite favorite. Favorite favorite. I'm not Rams. a favorite guy. What do you yeah, want no, me to you're do? You're not. You're not. You have to do, you have to do your job. Uh, Bubba. Uh, Chiefs minus six and a half. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay, we have X Factor coming up. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's uh, Sean Taylor Jersey retirement day, Bubba. That, I, does that not mean anything to you? Um, Which did they announce this like no, all of a sudden? No, really. yeah, it was. They want to make everyone stop something. thinking about this Dan Snyder's email. This is planned all along. I mean, it's a cat. Sean Taylor's not really that important to you know yeah. the Washington this football team. They, they, they figured random. they, they figured people didn't really want to you know be aware of that or yeah. maybe plan for that. Before the season, because is there an anniversary or something, or is it just a random? Game? No, I think it's seventeen game. year. Yeah. It's the seventeen years. So. Oh yeah, who doesn't celebrate seventeen years? Yeah, 17 yeah. Years. Uh, no, it's just this is planned well in advance, yeah. years, years in advance, actually. Uh, no, I, I truly believe that they're not competent enough to pull off a last minute PR stunt like this to be like, oh shit, everyone's talking about all the emails that we've been receiving, uh, that might be made public, so we should do the Sean Taylor retirement thing. This Sunday, yep. I don't. I I think that's something that a normal uh, team would probably think would be a good thing to to like distract people from the other conversation. But I don't think the football team's competent enough to pull it off on such a short timetable. So they're so incompetent that they can't be competent about being incompetent. Got it. And uh, I do think that they just goofed up and they were like, "Hey, whoops! I guess we forgot to tell all the fans that their favorite player, really the only." Beautiful thing that we've had going for this franchise in the last 20 years. Um, yeah, we're going to be trying, retiring his jersey. Maybe, maybe what happened was Dan Snyder sent out a memo saying everyone stop emailing each other, being like, you know, put a band aid over a gaping wound. And then that was why the communication never got out there that it's Sean Taylor Day. They've just been locked out of their emails. They've just yeah. not been speaking. No one in the, in the uh, front office or, you know, the comms department, they haven't been able to talk to each other because no email. That's the best way to get rid of the problem. Yeah. Is like you can't, you can't print out racist memes if you're unable to send them in the first place. Right. And we did find out that the, the most toxic part, because they did the report, and you remember that the report that was issued to uh, Roger Goodell was the world's first oral report into an investigation of decades-long sexual harassment and Correct. workplace toxicity. So they gave an oral report so that you can't like print it out, so you can't even release copies of the report because those don't even exist. Right. But the bottom line was the worst part of the environment in the Washington football team front office is that John Gruden just couldn't stop emailing them. Well, I was going to say the worst part is that Adam Schefter... Broke all the rules of journalism. Yeah. That was the worst part. Well, Mr. Editor. Yes. Just disgusting. Also, uh, we don't say his name, but you can figure out who I'm about to say. But he did a great job of being a lightning rod for Schefter by making the story about himself and really stepping in it. Yep. Which absolutely. Was great. Very good job yes. by D Money. Yes. D Money. Uh, all right. Your favorite favorite. I actually, for this game, by the way, I, uh, I feel like. I feel like the Chiefs might be in more trouble than we let on, but I don't know. I don't know. This, I mean, this is this is my favorite over of the week, which mm -hmm. we'll get to. But like, this, 
I something something's weird about the Chiefs. We'll see. I guess they if they win this game convincingly, then I'll be like, okay, they're back on track. But this definitely feels like a get right game yeah. for the Chiefs. You yeah, know, like they they're going up. It's the two worst defenses playing against each Correct. other. Correct. And the Chiefs are going to just hang 60 points. That We might be in for a six. What is it called? A 60 lobster? 60 lobster. 60 lobster this weekend. Yes. All right, your favorite favorite. My favorite favorite is Cowboys, minus three and a half at the Patriots. Uh, Dan Quinn put on a helmet in practice this week. Nice. And worked on taking out uh, his, his player's legs because he says that's what the Patriots are going to be doing to you. I want to give you the best look possible. So uh, he came out with a helmet on and started diving at knees. So Got it. I like the Cowboys in this one. Uh Patriots are going to have a long Sunday. Hank, I don't know how you feel about that. It's the curse It's the curse of Hank, of the check mark. Hank becoming a blue check, I think, might have done some damage to your beloved Patriots, Hank. Do you have any comment about so? that? How so? Please, please elaborate. Well, check Hank's over there. You're like, oh, look at me. I'll never be a... I'll, I'm always going to be a bad boy. PFD brought that up for that joke. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm trying to check. You also just torched my fire fest, but uh, I don't see a blue check Which mark joke? next to my name. The check Hank's. You like that nickname? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm not worried about it. I think it's such a rat line that it, when we talked about it, oh, on I thought Sunday, you were gonna address the Twitter. We'll talk about that at Firefest. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think it's a rat line too. I think the Patriots might win this game. It doesn't make any sense. That's why I like it because I've been I've been looking at the rat lines for the last few weeks and just betting the square side of the rat lines, and it's been a pretty successful strategy for me so far. But this does look I don't know. It's weird when I when we talked about it on Sunday. It's just it's like an electric fence. You I, don't want to touch it. Yeah, this yeah. But I'm going to touch it. I think the it, and also the Cowboys have played three home games in a row. Now they go on the road. I feel like that's always a weird thing. I don't know. I just think the Patriots are going to be game in this uh, in this one, and it's going to we're going to walk away being like, oh, maybe they actually are good. Maybe they're actually turning a corner here. Uh, all right, my favorite favorite is the Browns minus three. Bad weather in Cleveland. Wins twenty to forty maybe. Uh, I also just think the Cardinals. Uh, are due for they've been flirting with it they're due for a loss and they're due for the browns to run the ball down their throat this is going to be a good game to figure out whether or not the cards are actually candy ass yeah and i I, yeah going up against that offense it's like yeah they're going to try to maul you and chunt you to death if they can stop the chunting then i will i will officially acknowledge and admit that the cards are not candy ass. correct yeah so i i do think the browns are going to beat them i think the browns are going to man up on them and they also are getting a little bit healthy so the browns uh are my favorite favorite of the week and the cardinals not a bad team but also i I like. I start to get upset. It's actually kind of similar to the Steelers last year, where you start to get like almost mad about the last undefeated team if you don't feel like they really deserve it. Mm-hmm. And they're not there yet. But if they win this game, I'll start to be like, "What the fuck? They're not a six and zero team." I almost don't even think that it, when it, when a team's five and zero, we shouldn't refer to them as being undefeated. Undefeated to me feels like six and zero and above. Yeah, yeah. Then this week it's really something. This yeah. week they will officially be undefeated. Uh, Billy, I'm going with the Chiefs. They're going to clown the Washington clown football. Oh it's shit. Clown, you know? Damn. Is this a... Uh, it's starting to make you me... You want to win this one? I want to win this one. But yeah. I don't know if you do, because if you look at those two teams, do you think that's a lot of points? Do you no, think... I think that's a clown show. It's clown, clown show. show. Yeah. I, I mean, he, they clowned him two weeks. At, I got to say... Like, I've been predicting clown shows pretty well. Yeah? yeah. What I was have. your last clown show? Uh, two weeks ago, the Chiefs clowned the Eagles. Yeah, they uh-huh. did clown them. You're the right. Boxed off. You're actually I, right. But that wasn't that a was clown a... show. That was a shit pumping. <laughs> okay, but I thought nice. you said they were going to clown them. I didn't say that the Bucks were going to clown. Did you have a clown game last week? It was a shit pumping. Game. Brady was going to go off. Yeah, Brady was yeah. going to go off, and he, he did. He, for, it, he did something he's never done in the history of his career. So exactly. Mm-hmm. Good job, Billy. Uh, Jake, your favorite favorite. My favorite favorite is the Baltimore Ravens minus Ooh. two and a half against the Los Angeles Chargers, solely based off of this that. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, since Lamar Jackson became the starter, they are twelve and zero on short rest. The majority of those wins by double figures. Yeah, I, I think in advisors I took the Chargers, but I'm already regretting it because I do think the Ravens are gonna be able to run it down the Chargers' throat. I don't know. I, I think I Chargers actually, run, run defense is not very good. I like the Chargers in this one. What if they did the thing that they did a few years ago when they were in the playoffs against the Ravens and brought out dusted out the old like eight defensive back formation? Yeah. Uh, Why not? I, I just know that their their run defense is one of the worst in the – I was about to say country, but it's not. It's in the league. I'm going to look it up right now. Uh, I, I just – I don't know. 
This one, this one's a tough game. It's going to be a great game. It's has some really good games. This is a very, very good game. I'm very is, excited to watch yeah. it. Uh, are, are, we we kind of gave Lamar a pass because he had such a great game on Monday night, but he he always seems to have one of those plays like he had around the one yard line where he fumbled the ball. Correct. And then say what you want about DK, but DK will chase you down after he fumbles on the one. Lamar, when he was running after the defensive back. He looks slow on defense. Yes. He's a slow defensive player. So the Chargers now, obviously last game probably skews it a little bit. But as of right now, in terms of total yardage and yards per game, they are the worst rush defense in the league. Yeah. The last game does. That was was a big game against the Browns. Of course. So I I put that with a grain of salt. But there's one thing the Ravens obviously want to do. It's run the ball. So, uh, okay, good pick. Jake. Uh, Hank, your underdog. I mean, is there is there any other option? What? The lunder? For your underdog? Oh, underdog. My yeah. bad. So I jumped the, the gun there. Yeah. Uh, Patriots. Oh, okay. Okay, head to head. Talk to you, PFT. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I I do think Spicy. the Patriots are going to keep this game close. Yeah. Money line. Smash it. Sprinkle it. Suck it off. That's it's going to be. <laughs> finish it off. It's yeah. going to be Boston Sunday, right? This is when every team is going to be playing. Uh, no, that's no. if the ALCS goes seven games. Okay. Next weekend. That'll be a hell of a game. The yeah because what the ALCS is Friday Saturday, Friday Saturday, to start mm-hmm. right. Um, okay, uh, Liam, your underdog, uh, Lions plus three and a half. Okay, I just feel like they're due. I, I think they're going to win this they're game. So due. Me too. I, they are. Mm-hmm. They're due. Yeah. Like he cried. He cried exactly. for his team. Yeah. I also I like the fact that the Lions are going in this game and the story is like they keep finding these new ways to win on field goals. The Bengals. I think all their wins have been three point wins, except for the Steelers one that they had. But like all their games mm-hmm. have been three points here or there. So I love taking the Lions in this because I don't feel like this is going to be a blowout. I think that like if you're if you play for Dan Campbell right now, you don't want to make him cry again. No. You know that feeling? Like if you have you ever made a parent cry? It's the worst feeling Terrible. on earth. Terrible. And you're gonna do anything possible to not let Dan Campbell cry in that post game press. Unless it's tears of joy. Yes. Which would be great. I think he would cry if he they won. He has to, yeah. Um, I, I also, I know this is a very silly thing to say, but Joe Burrow being on, like, a uh, speech count right now because he can't, his throat. Voice rest. Throat, yeah, the throat contusion. I do think that affects things. Yeah. He can't, he just can't talk to the team. He can't, you know, he can't do anything right now with his vo- voice. Yeah, it's tough to, you can't practice your hard count. He's a mime. That, yep. He's a, he's a quarterback mime. We should put Billy on throat rest at some point. Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. Just to save you your, mean Billy the throat goat? Yeah, to save your voice, Billy, for yes. later. Yes. Perfect. We're gonna need yeah. it down the stretch. I'll, I'll take the rest now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, your underdog, PFT. Uh, I'm gonna do the Lunder dog. So oh, I'm, okay. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. <laughs> the Lunder broke my heart last week, so I got to go with the Lunder dog. That's the Jags plus three. Yep. Um, Urban Meyer is gonna get the team's identity on offense trending in the right direction. Yep. 250, 250. Is Tua gonna play? Don't care. I think okay. he might. He might. Yeah. Don't care. Uh, I I like it with Tua. I like it with Brissett. I love it with Sinnott, if that's the guy that they go to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, Trevor Lawrence said that it's ironic that they're going overseas to play the Dolphins. It's ironic. That is ironic. It's not. That is ironic. I, I, irony is if you were to be like Urban Meyer uh, taught a class on ethics, mm-hmm. and meanwhile he's knuckles deep in his TA. Yeah. That's irony. Which he did teach this a class is, on ethics. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yes, yes. Yes. This is just unusual. Yes. That you're going overseas. This is just weird. Golf. It's weird. It's, it's, it's wild. It's, well, yeah, it is wild. It's borderline wild. Uh-huh. That both these teams in Florida are going to play somewhere else. Yep. Um. Okay, that game is going to... Ugh. It's just... Why do they do this? Just put it at 1 o'clock so we can forget about it then. I like the Jags outright. Um, yeah, I, I think so too. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it to myself again. I think the Bears – I actually think the Bears might win. But Bears plus five. I Let's see four and a half right Four now. and a half. All right, it's four and a half. Giving me four and a half. The Bears have beaten the Packers three times in the last ten years. It's been that bad. Mm-hmm. It's been very, very bad. And one of those times was Shane McClellan broke Aaron Rodgers in half. Um, I just – I don't know. I have a feeling their defense is playing well. The Packers are banged up on defense. And, again, I've done this to myself many, many times where Packer week comes and I'm like, start of the week, I say, oh, my God, I'm so scared. And by the end of the week, I'm like, we're going to fucking win this game. And then I sit in a puddle of my own tears, and it sucks. And I do think that Aaron Rodgers is – he's – 
He's really playing with us because he was making some comments about Bears fans being mean and how he'd never play for the Bears and all this stuff. And I just, I just want to beat him so fucking bad. And all he does is beat our brains in. So this is the week. Yeah, and you got Mason Crossbar coming off the worst game of his career. <laughs> Dude, this is going to be a tight game. Yep. Bears defense. Uh, Jalen Johnson's going to lock down Devontae Adams. Also, the Bears beat the Bengals in regulation. Correct. It took the Packers overtime Correct. to beat the Bengals. Transitive property, Bears are better than the Packers. Yes. I, I. This also is a very big week because it's like if the Bears win this game, they are now officially a borderline playoff team. Like yeah. they are, you can flirt with the playoffs. If they lose, it's like okay, we are what we are. Not a very good team. I looked at the graphic today. The Bears are in the hunt. Yeah, no. If they win this game, they'd be tied for actually be in first mm -hmm. in the NFC North. Yep. Uh, all right, that is my underdog, uh, Billy. I'm going with the Chargers. I think they're going to pull it out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Like yes, they have the worst rushing defense, and the Ravens like to run, but I feel like they're going to. Pull it out somehow. Okay. Yeah. I like That's him all too. you got to say. I just like I, Justin Herbert. I like him. I think you can put up the points. Yeah. Justin Herbert pulled a big time Mike Zimmer. You remember that old interview with Mike Zimmer where they asked him, if you weren't a football coach, what would you be doing? And yeah. he was like, I don't know. I'd probably be uh, uh, coaching football somewhere. And so they asked Justin Herbert, I think it was on the Dan Patrick show, like, what's what do you do for fun? Like, besides play football. And he's like, uh, I, I like to play football. Like, football yeah. is fun. Yeah, football. I like it. Football guy. Football. That's it. Justin Herbert. I am a little worried about the Chargers' third and fourth down conversions are, like, insane right now. I'm worried that that's going to regress. But that's just – that's a worry I'll keep to myself. Well, because they're going for it on, like, fourth and seven all the time. Yeah, I know. They, like, Which eventually is, is they're – awesome when it works, but I, I am with you in the fact that, like, by the numbers, it's going to not work at some point. Right, exactly. I'm going to try to look that up real quick. Um, what were you going to say, Billy? I'm trying to lose this one. You are? Yeah. <laughs> okay. How are you that doing? That was good to know. I wish you had told me beforehand. On the ones that you're trying to lose, how are you doing on those? I'm perfect. Last week I went two and two. And that's so but did 50, you, I'm staying right at 50. I'm trying. No, but did did you lose the games that you were trying to lose? Or yep. did you accidentally win one of the ones? Yep. Right no, now, the, perfect. the Chargers are fourth and third down conversion in the league. Um, so maybe they aren't. Right, let me see what fourth down conversion the Chiefs are insane in third down conversion. Uh, so you're trying to lose this one. Good to know, Billy. Thank you. Uh, what is your favorite underdog, Jake? I am taking the Houston Texans plus 10 at the Indianapolis Colts. Who are the Colts to be favored by double figures against a divisional opponent? Who are, that? Who are the Colts? Yeah, I wow. like it. Who the fuck do they think they are? Where do they get off? Seriously. Minus 10 against a divisional team? It's a lot of points, Jake. They've won one game, haven't they? Who do they think they are? Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's bullshit. I is do, what it is. I do need to wait to see if the roof is going to be open or closed. Fair. I feel like this weekend, this weekend it could be open. This yeah. Many this could be the weekend. Too many points. Too many points. Yep. They too many. Pay points. those guys to play football too. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go under. Uh, go ahead, Hank. Heartbroken last week. Got to get revenge. Taking the lunder. You are taking the lunder. Have to. It's it's such a like terrible proposition though to, to take the lunder and be like I could start the day 0 and 1 in a like starting the day 0 and 1 with an under that's really bad vibes. Mm -hmm. I did it last week and I feel like I need to get And how did you do the rest of the day? Terrible. Yeah, so there it is. So be careful. That's all I'm saying. Don't care. Be careful. Don't care. Okay. I like that. I like the I like the confidence. Um all right, lunder, Hank. Anyone else have the lunder? Jake, of Me. course you do. Of course you do, Jake. Yeah. Wait, we're doing the under first? Yeah, yeah, we're okay. doing the under first, and you have the under. Correct. Yes. Under uh, 47. Go ahead, Bubba. Uh, Bengals, Lions, under 47 and a half. I like that, too. I, that is mine. Is that yours, PFT? No, I like it. Okay, that is mine as well. So there we go. I, I do think that that game is going to be... That's going to be one of those games that Red Zone might have forgotten. Yeah. And we're like, mm -hmm. oh, what the hell is the score in this game? That's what I was thinking. A lot of field um, goals and stuff. Yeah, the Lions yeah. are also in, like, a weird... Uh, like score, like they're in they're in the Chris Berman score range with mm -hmm. some of their finishes, like nineteen to seven. They've yeah. gone nineteen to seven twice. Nineteen to seventeen. Sorry, yeah. nineteen seventeen twice. Yep, that makes no sense. So yeah, they're they're a weird score team. Twenty one to eighteen. Twenty two to nineteen. Okay, that that works. That yep. works. Twenty two nineteen. That works. Blinds win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are they going to win? No, they they're going to win their least. first game. I don't Maybe know. I just feel it. 
I feel it. All right, uh, PFT, you're under. I'm doing the uh, Lund- what is it? The Monday night football. Monday Lund- night football. Sunder. Sunder night football. Sunday. Sunder night football. Uh, it's uh, Seahawks at the Steelers. It's 42. It's a low under. But it's going to be Geno Smith. I think the league might have figured out Geno Smith, big cat. <laughs> On that last drive? <laughs> I think, yeah. I think the blueprint's out there for how to shut him down. Uh, the Steelers' defense is going to show up. And also, I mean, I want to bet against the Seahawks because they didn't sign our boy Blake Bortles. Yes. They brought Curse. him in. They teased him. Curse on their on their house. They they brought him in uh, just to pick his brain on how to beat the Steelers, probably. Field Yates should have to give back all those retweets and likes. Agreed. That's Agreed. bullshit. Actually, you know what? Blake... It was Blake's idea. Blake was like, I don't like this system, so I'm going <laughs> to decline the job. Yes. Pete Carroll doesn't let his guys cook enough. I do think that uh, there will be a lot of people who will sell themselves on Geno Smith and then remember that Geno Smith is Geno Smith. <laughs> yes. And it will be very quickly the Steelers' defense is playing awesome football. So if I'm Geno Smith and I somehow win this game, I think you have to fake an injury yes, immediately. absolutely. And get a huge contract afterwards. Absolutely. He's already got himself down – Pretty far in the hole. I would have faked the injury right after the game last weekend. I would have faked it after the first 98-yard drive. Exactly. You need to strike while the iron's hot in this league. And yep. I, he's really rolling the dice a little bit too much and betting on himself. Geno. Which, when you're Geno Smith, that's a dangerous person to bet on. Yes, yes. Um, all right, I, I gave my under. It's the same as Bubba's. Billy, finish us off because Jake has the same one as Hank. I think the Cardinals-Broncos under 49.5. I like uh Cardinals aren't playing the Broncos, though. Wait, wait. What did I write down? Yeah, that game's going to have zero points. It's Raiders and Broncos. Raiders and Broncos or Cardinals and Browns? Browns, Browns. Cardinals and Browns. A lot of wind. Yeah. A lot lot of wind. wind. I just feel like it's going to be the under. Yeah, you like it so much you didn't know they were playing. Browns and Broncos looks the same in my bad handwriting. That's okay. That's that's fair. Is this a lose it game? or Oh, it is. So you're trying to lose. I'm trying to lose this one. Okay, got it, got it. So we got two losses and then you'll have a win coming up, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, Hank, you're over. I'm trying to win this one, so that's good for me. Uh, I'm going over Browns Cardinals. Oh wow! Everyone's talking about this win like they fucking are meteorologists and just know that it's going to be gusting. Who knows? What? It's, it's Thursday right now. So what happens if it is gusting? Both teams are still, you know, good running teams, bad defenses. The Browns let up a thousand points last week. The Cardinals can score a lot of points either way. Good running games. Uh huh. But the wind is one of those but, things where everyone's like, the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind. We don't know if the win's going to be do that. Do you respect win? He doesn't. I don't think you respect win. I don't respect win on a Thursday when we're talking about a you game on a Sunday. You don't respect win. I don't respect. Bullshit. I don't respect you pretending cop like pretending to be a meteorologist. I'm not. You I are. just respect win. Every time someone... I say it over, you're like wind, but the wind. You don't know. You don't know about the wind. The okay. wind impacts the passing You want to make a wind game. bet? No. Let's I, make a wind bet. No. What, what is the, the gust of the wind going to be? Over 20 miles an hour, and I win. W- no, but it's, like, it's supposed to be 30 or 40. No, it's a 20 to 40. Okay, so you you're zero, going for the, le- the you lowest possible number. You get 0 to 20, I get 20 to 40. 25. 22 and a half. Are we talking sustained no, wind, or are we talking gusts? Gusts. It's 20 that's, to that's 40, and you're difference. trying to go 20, 25. If it's gusts, it should be All right, what does the loser higher. have to do? I don't know. Has to blow the winner. <laughs> yes, there it is. Deal. All right. Deal. Bet. Okay. But like blow like <sighs> Yeah, yeah, blow on. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Lance Stevenson. Yeah. LeBron. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Leaf All right, blower. deal. You don't respect wind. This is crazy. I just no, yeah. Yeah. I don't. You don't. You don't. What do you respect in terms of weather? Do you do you respect the snow? I respect snow. I respect the uh, hail. Hail and what about tornadoes? Hail doesn't really come around. Tornadoes enough. is just wind. earthquakes. You respect earthquakes? Tornadoes is real wind. That's yeah. what I would call real wind. That's yeah. a good quote. Tornadoes is real, real wind. wind. Yeah. <laughs> That's setting out that fraud ass wind. No, anything else is pussy shit. Hurricane. Okay. Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Hurricanes are legit. That's legit wind. Su- Tropical storms. No. Tsunamis. Tsunamis. Tro- Tropical storms. Not real wind. Nah. Yeah. 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 Typhoons. Ooh. Typhoons. What about seish waves? Don't even know what those are. So okay. no. Well, no respect. What about kill anyone? Super in the Great cell. Lakes. That's not weather. Supercell's weather. That sounds, mm-hmm. sounds like a superhero. Wildfire. What about uh, what? Are, what are the grovel? Grapple. Grapple. Gra- it's not grapple this weekend though. Yeah, no. But what about it? When grapple no, occurs. No oh, okay. All right. Sleet. No. Earthquakes. Just, yeah. Okay. Global warming. Not real. <laughs> yeah. Rain. <laughs> Acid no. rain. Yes. Volcanoes. Acid rain. Yes. Volcanoes. Yes. Volcanoes. Yes. We're just naming disaster movies now. Yeah. The Rock. The Wrestler. No, The Wrestler. San Andreas Fault. New song's a banger. 
Who? The Rocks. With the, yeah. Is it? The Rock. Yeah. He raps. Hell yes. 10% yeah. luck, 20% skill. Although, uh, we should really, we should remember that he did do a rap song with the Fugees back in like 2002. It doesn't that's matter. True. It's a great song. That is true. Um, all right, that was guys talking weather. Uh, Liam, you're over. Uh, Chargers Ravens over 53. Okay. So, we got a lot riding on this Chargers Ravens game. Mm. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's just a Glenny Ball is fun over. Let me just look at the wind real quick. It is a fun over. You're Baltimore. with me, weather. In Baltimore. Um, okay, uh, PFT, you're over. I got the Washington football team Same. Chiefs over. Just Same. two all-time bad defenses right now. Um, and I'm not I, – I am thinking that long-term the football team will eventually figure it out, but this is not the week that it's going to happen. There will be nothing figured out this week. Uh, two uh, Wind 16 miles an hour in Baltimore on Sunday. Scared? Hank, should I be? No. Okay. okay. Yeah. What about it in in Raul John, Maryland? Uh, let me find that. Um, the uh, I the only reason I'm a little nervous about this over, so it's 55 and a half. I'm nervous because it's so obvious. Yeah. Like both these defenses suck. So now, of course, both these defenses will have a great Sunday, and we'll be like, "What the fuck just happened?" What I'm concerned about is we might get the, the bad version of Taylor Heineke occasionally, like last week, the Loneke. Yeah. Yes. And so yes. he's going to throw some interceptions. And that would uh, obviously impact the football team's ability to score. But the good news is Patrick Mahomes just needs one play to throw the ball 70 yards, and it's another touchdown. Well, wait, hold on. You didn't let me say the wind yet. Okay, what's the wind? Uh, looks like the wind is going to be seven miles an hour. Okay, I love the I love the over then. Up to nine. Right. Okay. 11, up to 11. Double digits makes me nervous. I still like it. Okay. I still like the over. Okay. Um... Billy, you're over. Seahawks Steelers over 42. Ooh, mm. going head to head with PFT. I'm actually trying to lose this one too. Okay, okay so you're good. trying to lose yeah. all your bets. <laughs> I'm trying to lose three out of my four. I'm okay. gonna go one and three. Okay, if you do go one and because three, I'm, I'm getting too high over 500. I just want to stay. Uh, right we got to get back down. Yep. 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 Fair. Fair. And then Jake finishes off. I'm with Hank on uh, Cardinals Browns over 49 and a half. Okay. okay. Um, any games we missed? We did miss the Vikings Panthers. Yep. I do think the Vikings are going to win this week, and I think that everyone's going to try to shove it in our face about Kirk Cousins, and then I'm going to have to say, well, it was Sam Darnold. Yep, so this is actually a loser leaves town. Yeah. I think that loser gets the done chain of this game. Yes, yes. Hanging on them. It's a must win for the Vikings because the rest of their schedule is really, really tough. Yes. I think they've got probably like almost eight guaranteed losses from here on out. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking right now. Definitely a tough schedule coming up. Um, and then the Raiders versus the Broncos. I am all in. On this Rich Basicchia guy, whatever how do you mm -hmm. say his name, Basicchia. Yeah, his, his press Italian. conference where he just started talking about how big his family is. Yeah, like what we didn't ask. Well, he was also crying. I loved it. He was crying thinking about his men. Yeah, he's like there are a lot of guys in the locker room, just like a lot of guys that put me in a position of trust of leadership. Yep. When you cry thinking about your men, and you cry, oh, he's also crying thinking about. An opportunity that he has. Yes, he's like no one gets this opportunity. I'm just so privileged to be in a place where I get my shot at it. Crying about your men and your opportunities—that's football guy stuff. And I'm not 100 percent sure if he's going to be like an interim all star like we've seen in the past with yeah. certain, certain coaches. But I do know that he's close enough to it where I have to bet on him because I don't want to miss out on it just in case that he is. I think he's going to. I think they're going to bounce back here for a couple weeks, and it's going to be it's going to be a few weeks before they fall back to earth. But I I think they're going to get something out of this guy. He reminds me of Jersey Jerry a little bit. He looks like Goldberg, yeah. the wrestler, which also is bonus points. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, the Raiders and interim Rich, I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. And Booger said he was a top five foxhole guy. That's right. So, but he fuck. also had uh, he had some questionable foxhole choices, I think, didn't he? Whoa, Sean McDermott. Else? Yeah, put Sean McDermott in his foxhole. Who else was in it? I can't remember. Not Bill Belichick, which uh -huh. made Hank mad. Um, not Tony Dungy. Not Tony Dungy. He doesn't go in another man's foxhole. Nope, absolutely not. That's sus. It's preposterous. That's very sus. You think Tony Dungy, if he was like in World War II, and it's like, oh, the bombs are coming, he's like. Come in my jump in my foxhole. He's like, pause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's do fancy fuckboys. And we have Julian Edelman and a very special guest, X Factor from the famous X Factor versus Red Extreme fight in Kansas City on Sunday night. Yes. Yo. Yo. What's up? Yo. Let's get it. Yo. 
What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is up with you, my What the fuck is your name? You got nothing. Who is this guy? My name is Polly Potatoes. Yeah, Paul Potts, baby. What are you, Irish? What are you, Irish? No, he's Paul Potts. He's from Cambodia. My stardom is hockey. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Oh, ice, the ice. ice. <laughs> ESPN. Biz and the great one. It's that time of year. Fucking love the puck. Fucking love going ice to ice, tape to tape. They're on yeah. TNT, but that's all good. Ice They're everywhere. ESPN, TNT, all the fucking letters. Yep. Uh, my sitem is my fucking iPhone because this thing is fucking bugging out, dude. Trash. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm Steve that's Jobs. Fucking saying rat. I don't have fucking service and saying I don't have a cell phone plan. I might be fucking broke as a joke. I don't know what's good. Did you say cell phone or cell phone? Cell phone. Cell phone. Yeah, I don't know, dude. This shit's That's dicked up. Yeah. Maybe you stop paying your bill. Yeah, fuck a bill. Fuck Bill. You're not an adult. Fuck Bill Broke Gates, boy. that fucking communist fuck. My sleep is James <laughs> Conner. <laughs> yeah? James Conner. Yeah. James Conner, uh, you know, big game. There's a lot of wind going on this weekend in uh, ah, Arizona. Uh, Browns. Uh, it's not even, yeah, yeah. Going to be a maybe. big Russian attack game. So you got James Conner on your bench. You're going to want to put him in the starting lineup. He's set to go off this weekend. People wind. forget when the wind's at your back, you run faster. Facts uh -huh. only. Actually, more points. All facts, no printers. Yeah. Uh, what's up, you little fucking pussies? This is Christopher Columbus. Hey! hey. hey. Legend. Perfect Italian. This nice week, day you had Monday. This week, I'm starting. Genocides. This week I'm sitting Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon's on my sit list. He caught one fucking pass last week. He caught one fucking puff puff pass last week. Fuck him. The R words and the C words on C words day week. A tradition unlike any other. My sleeper is Hendrix Lapierre. You seen this guy? No. You seen this kid? Hendrix Lapierre. Got a goal last night. He used to wear Alex Ovechkin jerseys oh. back when he was a kid. Now he's playing with them. Fuck now yeah. he's scoring with them. LaPierre. Plus his name's uh -huh. Hendrix. Pretty La cool. LaPierre. Uh, all right, what's up, guys? It's Petey Pringles. Hey, Petey. My Pete. stardom is Caleb Williams, starting quarterback for Oklahoma. They got the binoculars out. They found out what he was doing. They got Lincoln Riley canceling practices. Caleb Williams is going to be a star. Oklahoma, I'm giving him out 12 to 1 to win the national title. There we go. Get the fuck out, Spencer Rattler. My sitem is aliens. Fuck them. They got no feelings, thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's an alien. Fucking alien. The aliens got no feelings, though, I would so they wouldn't even the come. Shit out of an alien. They wouldn't even come. Pauly. Doesn't matter as long as I do. Yeah. Hey, aliens don't have feelings? They What's said, this now? Neil deGrasse Tyson said aliens don't have feelings. Not talking about illegal aliens. He said he wanted to qualify that. He said aliens from outer space. Space aliens, no feelings. You mean extraterrestrials? Extraterrestrials, no feelings. Got it. And then my sleeper is Kyrie Irving. Making a lot of sense. <laughs> hey, what's up, boys? <laughs> Kyrie. How hey, we doing, boys? Hey, you know, you know what he said? What? No, I don't know. I, I actually didn't understand a word a of it. Sense. <laughs> How we doing, boys? It's bologna macaroni. Oh, nice. Yeah, big BM. My stardom is Austin Eckler. He's having a great season. My sit -em is Brett Favre because he's on welfare. Yeah. yeah. My sleeper from my sources. From my sources. Uh -oh. A guy who told me. A uh -oh. guy who knows a guy. Uh-oh. He says uh -oh. that uh -oh. the beer wolf uh -oh. was like oh, beer wolf. Yeah. Coming yeah. Back. yeah. Now, did, sneaky. That's my sleeper. I love it. I love the beer wolf. Sources. Yeah. And Those are my sources. Tweet us if your dog started freaking out at that part of the podcast. Uh, our, friend, our friend Clue has been working hard on the beer wolf for the last couple years. The Coors people may or may not have told us that they have yes. an extra beer wolf laying around. Beer an inside wolf. source that they yes. could send to this I studio. think you were in that meeting. It was, was like a year yeah, ago. I think so, yeah. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I think you were. They said Billy, the beer wolf. And you're like, oh, okay. I was in that meeting. Okay, yeah, beer no wolf might be coming back. Yeah. That was a great blog, Billy. Thank you. Your Beer Wolf uh, rundown of the Beer Wolf commercials. Such a hilarious premise. It was an interesting story how it developed. Yeah. Yeah. They had, it was just a character in a Halloween commercial. <laughs> uh -huh. And they were like, everyone loves the wolf. Yeah. It's fact. Your actually, inner Beer Wolf. It was actually a werewolf. Yeah. More, more beer companies need to get back into the whole like live animal mascot thing. Mm -hmm. And for a second today, I was telling Billy that it was an actual wolf. And not like a human inside the suit, and he he totally believed me. That's what if it was a true. wolf for inside about, the wolf suit? For it could be, it could also. We don't be know. That. Yeah, we don't know. But Billy believed me for about thirty seconds. He's like, wait, you're serious? I was like, no, no, I'm not Billy. Is but I true? could be. No, I didn't think that PFT actually knew there was a costume. Got it. He thought there was actually a wolf. We should get a real wolf. Have it just smash Agreed. some beers. Um. All right. 
Let's get to our interviews. Before we get to our interview with X Factor, we have a very, very special announcement from a very special sponsor that we have, Shady Rays. You know Shady Rays, you know their sunglasses. They're the only sunglasses that I wear. They are just simply put the best sunglasses I've ever owned. And the big news is we've got an exclusive part in my take limited edition release of Shady Rays sunglasses. In 2020, we launched our first ever collaboration with Shady Rays. And this year they're coming back with a brand new look. I'm wearing them right now. I've got the Ventura frames on there. They're my personal favorite frames. They're sleek looking. They're hard working. They're durable. They're nice thick frame. I've got the uh, the black smoke lenses on them. They're my favorite. We've also got them available in the Ventura model with the infrared smoke. That's Big Cat's favorite lens that you can get. They've got the matte gray acetate frame. It's ultra premium. It's a badass look. It's got inset metal Shady Rays logo on the outside and signature part of my take logos on the inside. You got those two options to choose from, both the Venturas, the infrared smoke, and the black smoke. And it comes in slick packaging, too. The packaging is amazing. You get the full experience with a custom design box to store your shades. The outside features Shady Rays and Barstool branding. On the inside, it kicks it up a notch with an exclusive Part of My Take limited edition logo with the names of yours truly. They had us actually sign... Uh, like it was like a computer uh, signature thing that we did. So it's got our signatures that are uh, laser printed on the inside of every single box. The limited edition shades are covered by the perfect Shady Rays warranty, the best warranty in the entire industry. If you have a problem with any of their shades, they're going to throw profit out the window and they will do what it takes to make it right. They also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed and have provided over 20 million meals to date. So you can get them... They're only 2,500 pairs, so you have to act fast. Listeners to today's show are at the front of the line. They won't last beyond the fall season, so grab them now before they sell out. They're 100% worth the price. Go to ShadyRays.com slash PMT. Get your pair. The special collaboration between Shady Rays and ourselves, available only at ShadyRays.com slash PMT. X Factor is also going to be brought to you by Sling. If you like watching live sports on television but you don't want to sign up for an expensive long-term cable package, well, Sling has you covered. If you like sports, it's time to take control of your TV experience. It's time that you got Sling. Sling is a place where your favorite sports channels like ESPN, FS1, TNT, and more all live together for less. And it's the cheapest way to get the best NFL viewing experience on TV, the NFL Red Zone. With packages like the Sling Blue and Sports Extra Package, you get Red Zone, NFL Network, and more. But it's only 21 bucks a month. Plus, you get to watch past episodes of PMT, The Yak, Stool Streams, and exclusive new Barstool content for free on the Barstool Sports channel on Sling. It's easy to set up, easy to use, no contracts, starting at just 35 bucks a month. Sign up now and get your first month for just $10. Whatever you're into, if it's live sports, Sling TV is the home for it. Go to sling.com slash Barstool, sign up now, get your first month starting at just $10. Okay, we now welcome on an interesting guest. It is super fan of the Kansas City Chiefs, X Factor. We talked about him on Wednesday's show. He had a little brouhaha at Sunday Night Football, Bills versus Chiefs. So we wanted to get to the bottom of it. We wanted to talk to the man himself. It is X Factor. X Factor, thank you for joining us. How are you doing right now physically? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. No. Physically, I am not. Um, yeah, my head hurts. I got knocked into next week, Devoed. Um, so I had some teeth chipped. So I got tooth pain. I got four broken ribs. Um, uh, and I even sprained my ankle Sunday morning before the game fishing. So I got a sprained ankle, wow. too. Wow. So, uh, so the broken ribs, can we talk about that real quick? There's yeah. some people out there, not us. Not us, because we're still trying to do our investigation, get to the bottom of it. Some people out there are saying, hey, X Factor, do you, do you got in a car crash earlier this week or last week. Yeah. Then you got punched in the face and then said that you broke ribs with the punch in the face? Yes. Okay, so that's that's the story we're going with. Yeah, I, I, I broke my left knuckle in the wreck, and then I had glass in my arm and stuff. I had a concussion, but I didn't break no ribs in the wreck. I was wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. Got it. Um, I, I'd also like to say we probably should have introduced you at the top of this interview by uh, giving you your respect that you are entitled to. You are a Hall of Famer. 
a pro football Correct. hall of fame super fan yeah one of just a handful of people that can say that so uh congratulations on the induction i know it was you and barry sanders that got in the same year um yep and two john all-timers elway. And, and john, john elway. three all-timers yep. yeah and so i i saw the pictures of the car wreck i want to make sure how are your guinea pigs doing are they are they safe? Did they survive the crash? Yeah, yeah. They that was a crazy story in itself. So they actually, one of them was ejected. I found him outside the vehicle in the mud. He went out the passenger window, and then we couldn't find the other. One. We had a bunch of people looking, and I went back after they turned the car back on its t um, wheels, um, and I heard it going. Murp, murp, it was caught in between the windshield and the dash. Whoa. Okay. Um, and I thought it was dead almost like I was going to have to kill it. And oh. I picked up the glass and she came running out. So they're, they're Kelsey and Tyreek. Kelsey they're used and to Tyreek. Be. That's okay. great. And they're, and they're, they're healthy as ever. So I, I'm yeah. interested to know about the lead up to the fight with Red Extreme. I know that you kind of took him under your wing and and showed him the yeah. ropes about how to become a super fan, even gave him his nickname. Um, but yes. then I guess things went sour along the way, and people are saying that yeah. you you threw something at Red Extreme that instigated the fight. Is that is that true, or maybe you can walk us through how the incident occurred? Um, I was actually going down to meet a friend that comes up from Oklahoma. He had his grandson with him to take a picture. Before right, right after game start, I was running late, um, big time on Sunday night. Usually, I'm in stadium an hour before the game. I was in there about 15 minutes after pitchers, everything. Um, but anyways, I was going down to meet him, um, and yeah, I stopped and saw some friends. A bunch of people wanted pitchers. As I'm walking down that deal, I didn't even see him. Um, and stuff, but, um, you know, I'm taking pictures and all of a sudden I see him running up the stairs and he looks like he's going to kill me for some reason. So I tried to grab his Jersey just to talk to him, you know, stop him. And yeah, that's when he threw the, the one time, um, sucker punch. I, you know, he's never hit me before in the past. We have a lot of history. So it kind of shocked me. So, um, so what you're saying is it was a sucker punch, not in the fact like you saw it coming. It was a sucker punch yeah. in the fact that he had never hit you before. So Correct. then it becomes a sucker punch. Correct. Got it. Um, w real quick on the on the pictures. How many pictures do you take in a given game? Because you know we're close friends with another uh, pretty famous guy, Marlins man, who gets hounded yeah. like the Beatles. Uh, yeah, is it yeah. is it just crazy? Is it just pictures yeah. all the time for X Factor? Yeah, I'm I'm actually good friends with Marlon Man too. Nice. Um, I see him, I see him here in Kansas City. I last time I saw him was Super Bowl Miami. Um, we and of course, yeah. Once me and him get together, then everybody wants <sighs> pictures with Marlon Man and X Factor. Yeah, yeah so. it's like a super band. Yeah, like that's, traveling Wilburys. It's like when Leo and George Clooney go out together. Can't can't yes. get anywhere. <laughs> You guys can't make me laugh too much. I got four broken ribs. From the punch. <laughs> from the punch. Yeah. Right. Not from the car it accident. It hurts. I don't know yeah. if you have broken ribs. That I have. Shit hurts. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I actually did. a rib doctor if you need any help. Um, it sounds to me, actually, I heard that little wheeze there. It sounds like you might have six broken ribs. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. All right. So, so the punch happens. Um, uh -huh. Do you know why he punched you? I, we saw there was some... Maybe bad blood from 18 years ago, but that seems like it would be a random time yeah. to to get justice from 18 years ago. So what 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 maybe caused this for Red Extreme to to sucker punch you while you were looking at him? He said somebody threw water at him. So oh. I, you know, and it wasn't so you. If, it, it wasn't you. No, no. Now where does the bad and, blood stem from? What's what is the history there? Well, he, he literally was my best friend. I took him to do everything. I made him famous. Um, yep. And um, then he ended up sleeping with the mother of my child. I, oh. And he like, That's he would like. guy code. You can't yeah. do that. Come on. Yeah. Then, and, and then like uh, we'd be at the game all day long. I'd wonder why my, the mother of my child was always mad at me and always seemed to know everything because he was sitting there texting her everything I was doing and saying. Oh, man. Uh, so that's I, yeah, I, that's bad blood. So so Red Extreme, I, I got to admit, X Factor, <clears throat> is there a part of you that's like 
is Red Extreme more famous than you? Because I've heard of Red no. Extreme. I had not heard of X Factor until this. No, it's, it's not even close. Okay. No. All right. Good. All right. Because I was worried. I I likened it to. I, I'm, I'm the five. one in the pro. I'm in the one in the pro football hall of fame. Yeah. I'm the one that helped bring two Guinness World Records for crowd noise at Arrowhead Stadium. I think. For, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I've watched a lot of football in my day, but I don't think I can even be mentioned in the same breath as X Factor because you did set the world record for the most football watched in a row, right? Yeah, I watched 70 straight hours. But even bigger than that, I'm the guy, we got two, well, we got, it's the current Guinness World Record for crowd noise, 142.2 decibels. We're the loudest stadium, not only in the NFL, but the world. I brought that to Kansas City Wait, with my friends. All right, so let me ask you a quick question on that record. Was Red Extreme in the crowd on that record-breaking day? Yes. Uh-oh, so it's it's his record, too. No, I, I'm the one that got Guinness. I got the oh. Chiefs. I got I, I set it all up. It's all of our record. It's 80,000. There was two different times we did it. So we did it, and then Seattle came back and beat us by 0.1 decibel. And after we broke their initial record, um, and then we came back and beat them the second time. So there was uh, technically 160,000 people there, but a lot of the same people were there for both. How do, how do you engineer a record like that? Was there a certain time of the game, like after the third quarter, we're going to start screaming? No, Guinness gives you three attempts. They have a judge right there with a monitor, and we had a, a judge with the Chiefs, and a, we'd see a big play happen, and we'd say, we're going to mark this play and record for a minute how loud we got, and we only got three chances. Got it. So is there any way that that you – Oh, Are you be okay? careful. Be careful. I heard right? that rib. Uh -oh. Did you hear the rib? Uh-oh, that might have been yeah. a tooth. What um is there any way that you and Red Extreme can olive branch this? Can you guys get back together, or is this something that might like every time you go to a game now, you're going to be looking well forward for the sucker punch, but you're going to be looking forward for the sucker punch right. at all times. Well, I have for 18 years. He's been threatened to do this for 18 years. Oh wow! So he just finally was like, enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and there there's other super fans that hate me. So like, I'm the top super fan, and then all these wannabe guys all hang together in lot D. They all hate on me. They all start lies about me all the time. You know, trying to get me to not come to Arrowhead because it's like a freaking high school. Um, it's gross. You know, uh, like the uh, God, that homecoming mean, game. You yeah, know? Mean Girls. It's, it sounds like a Mean Girls situation you're dealing with here. Oh, yeah, it's um, also so like yeah. a. It sounds like a lot of jealousy too. Like they hate us because they yeah. ain't us. Yeah, you're number one. They look at the X Factor yeah. and, and they want to take yeah. that crown. Yeah, they do. They want all the attention. So, um, which they can have it. I don't like doing interviews. You know, right? <laughs> obviously, yeah. you're pretty. Uh, obviously, I'm not too worried about. You know, this interview's cycle today because I'm already late to doing interviews. You know, I've had everybody call me right. the last couple of days. Right. Yeah, it's a, it sounds like you just rather, you know, keep to yourself and, and discreetly root for the Chiefs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, that's Not anymore. True. I mean, it, it, some stars shine bright, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, there, was a, no. there was a controversy as well in this. Uh, Red Extreme said that you're, you do meth. Uh, can we get it yeah. on the record that you do yeah. not do meth? No, I've never done meth. I got meth teeth because I chewed and smoked and did cocaine and alcohol for too many years. But mm -hmm. no, yeah. meth. No. no meth, no meth, no meth. Record. So we should maybe consider a lawsuit. Yes. Okay. It is, it's already going down. I already talked to lawyers. Oh. Uh, now let me ask you this. This is a very important question. If you and Red Extreme face off in a court, will you be wearing the hat? Sure, why not? Okay, yes. good, good, because like that. that's the right answer. Because uh, like I don't think you can show up 
and and as like yourself, you got to be X X Factor. Well, you're, you're entitled in the United States to face your accuser, and right. if you punch X Factor, then X Factor has to show up. It can't be the man behind the mask. That right? Does it. No, no, no. He can't get Clark Kent. A lot of people call me Superman because <laughs> I wear a cape and spandex. So yeah, you can't can't yeah. get the Clark Kent version because Clark would probably lose in court. There yeah. you go. Superman don't. So um, I, I know that there's, you know, there's this rivalry between yourself and, and Red Extreme. Um, we, we do a, a series of boxing matches here at Barstool. We call it Rough and Rowdy. Would you oh, be shit. interested in maybe stepping into the boxing ring and solving your problems through violence? No. <laughs> Back in the day, I would have. Not no more. I'm 46. This shit hurts. Fuck this. Yeah. Uh -huh. The ribs. I mean, I know that the ribs, they got to hurt. What did you think about... Um, uh, Red Extreme's quote when he said, I've never in my life felt so bad about feeling so good because knocking that lowlife son of a bitch out was the greatest feeling I've had in a long time. I hadn't even seen that quote. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So what, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I guess if he feels good, I, I did see that. Um, he goes, I want to be famous, but not famous like this. Well, he picked his poison. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they, they persecuted Jesus, too. I believe that was your quote from the article. Yep. Uh, yep, they did. And all his disciples. Yep. That's true. And do you have disciples right now? Because it sounds like you're kind of on an island when it comes to the Chiefs fandom. I mean, it feels like no. there are the, the D-Lot gang, uh, the Mean yeah. Girls, and then X Factor, who's just, he's trying to just live his life, and he keeps getting bothered. <laughs> no, I've got millions. So... Like, you go to Arrowhead, nobody ever says anything bad, you know, to my face. It's just nothing but love at Arrowhead. No, and mm -hmm. no matter where I go. Like, I'm going to Washington this Saturday for the game on Sunday, and there'll be nothing but love, you know, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think about the Chiefs right now? Can we get a little take on the team as, as they're uh, struggling a little bit? Yeah, they're kind of like X Factor. They got knocked out a couple times, but – you better watch out for them, especially the end of that fight. We're like Rocky Balboa. Yes, <laughs> yes, I love it. Love it. So what's what's your plan going forward? You're going to initiate a lawsuit, it sounds like? Or is there... Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you got to do the criminal and civil on him. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm actually seven hours away from Kansas City. I'm fishing, and on the mend, I really hurt. So I'm at my hometown, little dinky town, 3,000, so... Till yeah. tomorrow, and then I'll go back Kansas City, and I fly out uh, six o'clock Saturday morning to go hang out with the Hogettes in yeah. Washington. Do you, do you go to every road game? Not every road game, but I go to. I've been to like a hundred and two over the years, what? and been to every stadium. So nice. What uh? Just a thought. Maybe X Factor. Maybe you should start wearing some type of Kevlar vest. Maybe some type of armor. Uh, now that you're clearly a wanted man, have you thought about that? Nah, uh, spandex is good enough. I ain't scared. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Um. All right. So my last question for you, uh, X Factor. This has been fantastic. We really appreciate you, uh, joining us. So, um, there's, you know. There seems to be a lot of like bad blood in this one section. Do you all sit in the same section? Is that what the problem is? Uh, that all okay. So so are you going to change your seats? Is Red Extreme going to change your seats? Because it seems like this I, section is not big I, enough for the two of you. It's the same end zone. I just happened to come walking down there to see a buddy. I didn't. I don't think Red Extreme actually has season tickets oh. where he sets in the same place because oh. I. I don't see him. Right. I've sat in the same seats for 24 years. I'm not moving. He's so he's he might be a fraud. And then, do you know who maybe threw the the water? Probably a Bills fan. Yeah, uh huh. That Probably makes sense. a Bills fan. Um, how did Red Extreme get his nickname? From me. Yeah. I, How'd you come up with that? I, uh, we I like the play on X because he was like you know my sidekick. So. Um, he was always wearing red, mm -hmm. everything. So I said, how about red extreme? Love it. Have you given anyone else a nickname? Yeah, I've given, I've helped quite a few super fans over the years. Can we hear um, them? Yeah. Can we hear the names? Uh, so wild child. Oh, um, nice. Um, we've got, um, Tomahawk kid. I like that okay. one. Uh, 
we've got the now we got the magician um oh and stuff um that's my boy lindley that's that's next to me i didn't name him but we got chief santa um he's one of my apprentice um got it and and then when, um, when you say apprentice do you mean like you're showing them the ropes like how to become a super fan how to how to cheer correct. correctly what is well, that like no, it, I run a charity organization, so they want to do charity work with me. So Got it's it. like teaching, teaching them all that stuff. Right. And is there is there an application process like a vocational school if you want to be an X Factor apprentice? <laughs> no. Okay. No. What, all right. What about maybe, maybe I should go through a better yeah. You know, at least, yeah. At least get a at least get a dealer fax on these guys, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. make sure that they're not going to punch you 18 years from now and sleep with your baby's yeah, mom. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. yeah. So what, a, what about other super fans across the NFL? Are there any particular ones that you're close with? Uh, real close to the Violator in Oakland, most famous one there. Um, uh, Big Nasty out of Tampa Bay. Yep. Yep. Uh, um let's see uh, steve the owner and um um uh, green bay steve um the ultimate fan and texans yeah there's a bunch of them that i'm really close do to you, do you know oh. D detroit don and Superfan in detroit correct yes i do actually i think uh and and what's the turkey guy name oh um, i don't know i just i'm good friends with detroit don and Superfan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know them. Not like good friends with them, but yeah, I know them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got they were actually similarly persecuted. They got kicked out for standing on defense uh, in the third quarter on third down. Yeah. I mean, now, what? well, other people might have said that they were just flipping everyone off and screaming at people in the section, but I, as far as I know, it was they got kicked out for standing on defense. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. I don't think that I don't think that happened at Arrowhead. No, no, fuck that. You guys, yeah. I mean, it was it was bullshit. What they they got persecuted as much as you did, um, yeah. and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Do you no. know uh, the Seattle Seahawk? Yeah, he's great. Cannonball, Cannonball, and are you, oh, you're talking about Hulk? Yeah, the guy that he's in the front row yeah. and his entire body's painted green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I've never actually met him. He's like not in the Hall of Fame or nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. So he's sorry, he's sorry new, for asking. He's yeah, a newer yeah. one. We can cut yeah. that part out. Yeah, Nobody yeah. needs to know about yeah. him. He um. Did. All right. Well, X Factor. Uh. Best of luck the rest of the season. I hope you feel better. Um. And if you do change your mind, rough and rowdy with Red Extreme, it would sell a lot of pay per views. We could probably get a nice purse for the winner. Uh, yeah. And, and can we get Buck Tyson Holyfield right after it? That's I. When I think Red Extreme versus X Factor, I think Tyson Holyfield. That's for sure. Yes, well, get get both of them. Well, they know? would be the okay. undercard for yeah, you. Yeah, right. You guys would yeah, be the heavyweight we, we'll be, Yeah, they, they'd be the undercard for us because, you know, we're the new news. They're the old shit. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, and then also, good luck on the guinea pig. You, you, you uh, breed guinea pigs? Well, yeah, they're, the Kelsey's a girl. Yep. Um, and Tyreek's a boy. So, yep, we're going to have a family of them, Mahomes and... Tyreek and are we already got Tyreek Tyran all of them well, love it now um, how, how do you have to change the name of your guinea pig to Kels now that he's clarified how to how to say his last name <laughs> that's the biggest BS deal ever I agree he, he he got you all yeah not you though no you gotta Fuck wake up that. pretty early Fuck in the that. day to fool yes. X Factor yes yep. yes um all right well X Factor uh best of luck this weekend and uh hopefully you feel better man yeah, God bless you guys. Yep, Chiefs will go whoop on those um, NFC teams now. Because, yeah. yeah, the AFC is kind of brutal right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Bill's got your number right now. Um, all right, well, yeah. thanks so much. All right, guys, God bless you. Go Chiefs. All right, there you see, go. Ya. Good to see you. Okay, uh, let's wrap up Fire Fest of the Week. Henry, I think we know what we're going to talk about, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, I alluded to her during Fuckboys at some point. When we were recording this show, like my phone just lost all its cellular service. Uh, that happened to me once. Just unfortunate timing. Since I'm and then your dad got about to, yep. about to yeah yeah yeah. Uh, I think I figured it out. Okay, good. But if I'm not, you know, answering or have any contact oh, with you guys this weekend, it. it has nothing to do with going to Florida LSU. Okay, no, well, I'm, I'm I'm yeah, I'm dead ass. That's fair. Dead yeah, ass. Dead ass. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be um, tough to have your phone die before you're on a bachelor party weekend. Yeah, I know. 
Also, my first bachelor party weekend, so I'm kind of nervous about that. Whoa. All right. Uh, my real fire fest, though, is yesterday. You gonna fuck? No. Okay. Well, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> you never know. I feel like Will bachelor... you let us know if you do? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. I'll, uh, send, send a, a I'll, heart to I'll, the group chat. I'll put up an Instagram post and tag you guys. Yeah. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, yesterday during stool streams, me and Jake were, you know, just going through a broadcast, doing our thing, rocks, paper, scissors, shoot, intense as ever, and... Uh, I got an email notification, like a buzz, check my phone. My service mm -hmm. was still working yesterday. And it said, you have now been verified. And I was like, there's no way. This has to be a different account, like a part of my take or something, something, something. Go to Twitter. Boom. Blue check mark next to my name. And this coming from the same account that has tweeted out, if you get verified, you're a sheep. Yeah. No, I, no, no. I said, if you're verified, you're a sheep. Not okay. if you get verified. Mm -hmm. Well, you did get verified. Mm-hmm. But I'm not. I'm no longer verified. I I went through everything I could. I I told Twitter to go fuck itself in as as many ways as I possibly could, and they unverified me. So it's just weird that you got. It was a verified. tough few hours. PFT like it was maybe I don't know ten minutes, and PFT had put up like seventeen Instagram posts about it. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Uh, really just blowing up my spot. I put up one post like four hours after the fact. Uh, even though he was the original unverified bad boy and sold his soul to the devil, big that cat sold his soul a long I, time but ago. But I admit, at least I'm the only one who's honest here about no. I mean, my soul. Twitter forced the check on me, and Hank never yeah. believed that Twitter would right. do something like that without. Well, your I got it unchecked pretty and quickly, and you could too. I can show you yeah. out right now if yeah. you want to. You could. I, I've already Twitter, gotten unchecked. Twitter did force the check on you like two days after Gaz sent an email saying, "Does anyone want to get the verified check?" Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. we did get an that email. That was weird. No, no, I'm talking about with Hank. No, but with you as well. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, that was no, weird. No, I texted I, I, Me and Gaz are close. We're good friends. Uh -huh. uh, Brady, four members together, and I texted him probably as many of a text message as I've ever sent What'd them. What'd you say? I was like, what the fuck, man? And he was just like, question mark, question mark, question mark. Well, he's retired. And then I was like, dude, like, why you got to do me like this? He's like, I swear it wasn't me. Hmm. I was like, okay. Sounds like some some cappuccino. Yeah, wow. you think you think <laughs> Gaz would do that behind your back? It does. I mean, I, uh, something doesn't add up here. I, I mean, unless I'm just my tweets are so fire that Twitter was like, we have to verify have this to man. That's probably what happened. happened. And exactly there has been some happened. fake account. There's a fake fake accounts. There's a they're well, they're fanks. Yeah, they're fake Hanks. They're Finsta Hanks. Um, there has been a few that 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 there's a one that's Hank is old now. And he oh, just replies no. to all my tweet with Billy saying, "Oh no, Hank is old." Hank is I old. love when people so say like, "You're old now." It's like, well, guess what? You're gonna become someday, also old. Mm -hmm. That's how time works, buddy. Uh, so it's been a whirl. It's been a whirlwind of uh, 24 hours. Damn. Yeah. Can I what tell you saying? something? Yeah. I made oh, it. Oh, you yeah. fucking asshole. I was, asshole. I was behind it. Yeah. All right. That I makes sense. It was yeah, that makes was sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why you were posting yeah. about it. That's yep. why. All right. Yep. Gotcha. Got, yeah, got you. Yeah, you did ass. get me. You did get me. Gotcha. Gotcha, your ass. You got got. All right. Fair fair game. You're going to oh, regret. Did Hank just say prank war? Yeah, you're going to regret admitting that. I'll prank war. Wow. That's all I'll say. Nice. Prank war on. I love it. I love it. What are you going to do about it? You're going to find out. You're finna find out. You'll see. I'm fit. Fitna? Finna. <laughs> All right, PFT, what's your fire fest besides the fact that Hank's about to prank you? Yeah, any, no, any a, bachelor's tip advice? Like, what, I'm a dead what should man. I be, what should I like be prepared for? It's all older guys too. I'm, it's my older brother and all his friends. Yeah, so uh, the, like, the biggest tip I always give is don't don't plan a dinner for Saturday night. That's the dumbest thing ever. It's like a, like a tranquilizer dart to your face. You drink all day Saturday. <laughs> it is. You drink all day Saturday, and then you have this, like, someone always plans this big steak dinner on Saturday night, and everyone goes, and then there's just no party afterwards because it's like, holy shit, we drank all day, then we ate a big meal. Who wants to go out after that? Don't over plan it. You're That's gonna good. I, like I'm in one, charge of planning it, and it's you have not. It's, it's also someone's gonna Fred's in the game. You guys yep, are going tonight. Someone will most likely get injured tonight, just so you know. Thursday night's always the most dangerous night of a bachelor party because everyone gets together. They all get way, 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 way too drunk. Someone gets injured. Just gonna have to deal with that for the rest of the time. Don't let it be you. That's my biggest vice. There's gonna be one person that that uh, just kind of keeps the train going tomorrow morning, but overdoes it in the morning, and they'll be out by about noon. You just have to let that person sleep it off. Don't be the injured guy. All right. Don't be the injured guy. All right. Uh, PFT. Your also, combined with that, I'm missing Julian Edelman, which is devastating. Mm -hmm. that is I'm just fire. I'm just fire. He's a hero of yours. Personal hero. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Savior. Mm -hmm. King. Uh, Prince PFT, that was promised. Your fire fest. Well, I'm a dead man because Hank's coming at me. Correct. Yeah. So I'm I'm like just gonna have to live in hiding from this point on. I'm gonna be like Saddam Hussein in his little spider hole. 
I'm terrified of Hank. An angry Hank is a dangerous Hank. Mm -hmm. I don't. Th I don't know if I'm prepared to to like fend off these constant attacks. I'm and not mad. Really I'm just me, I'm finna get even. What really scares mm -hmm. me is how when Hank first said that he was going to come at me, it almost sounded like he already had a plan. Oh, like he knows what he's going to do. I don't think he knows, but he will know. He will know. He'll eventually. come at you. Uh, so that's that's a pretty bad fire fest right there. My other fire fest is I'm I'm pre tiring like Coach K again from rugby. This weekend is my last game that I'll ever play. I'm hoping to not get injured, hoping to play 20 minutes, get off the field safe and sound, have a couple beers, and uh, and make it back to New York intact on Sunday. Yep. But it's my pre-tirement. is the last time I, I step foot on the pitch. I love it. Um, all right. My fire fest is Gary Paulson died, and that's my favorite author. Hatchet so was please great. Please respect my time right now. Hatchet, one of the best books of all time. Uh Going by the Hank book method, a long book, <laughs> a mm -hmm. very long book, over 180 pages. Yeah, if I remember, no illustrations correctly. either. No illustrations. That was an all-time book that, when you read it, you thought, if I got dropped off oh, yeah. by a plane in the Canadian wilderness next week, I'm surviving I'm for like fine. six months. Totally fine. Greatest survival book of all time. What well, you got, Hank? You say something? Oh, I thought you. I thought you had a breaking moose. Billy and Jake, wrap us up. Jake, go ahead. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I got a birthday present in the form of AirPods because I thought I lost mine. I found mine, and I went to go return it, and it was 14-day return policy. So oh. I, I can get a gift card back, but not cash. Damn it. Mm -hmm. So I just procrastinated. Gift card, though? You can get the gift card? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. I can pay for it. Yeah. yeah. I need for some the new ones? I need some new ones. Yeah, no, they're the regular ones. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's, sorry your, what's your price, Jake? I don't know. Face. What are they offering? Face? face? No, face value. Value. You want me to more, give you dude. face? No, I'm not face. No, a little like more that. than face. Yeah, too little more than face. You went, you went all the way to the store. They're yeah. actually collectors' items because they were owned by the Jake Marsh. Yeah, Will you not sign owned. Them? Will I, you sign I, them? I can. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yeah, that's my fire fest. If you oh. autograph the outside, I'll pay you face for them. I'll give you face. <laughs> I will right. give you face for them. Deal. Okay. Billy. So I was uh, doing errands yesterday for the show, just picking up stuff for several projects. And uh, these two homeless guys were fighting on the street. And one of them, th and I was walking past, and one of them threw a trash bag at the other one. And the trash bag kind of whizzed by me, but, like, the trash juice got uh, on me. What? And that, the worst part is it got on my face. This and all a little bit almost got into my mouth. Oh, my God. And then I started, like, sp like spitting and, like... You got a homeless to... facial. Did you go? Did you get into the homeless fight? Homeless guy gave no, you a then, facial. No, this is the most fucked up part. Mm -hmm. The homeless guy saw that I got shit on me, and both of them who were fighting a second ago started both laughing. Oh at me. no! <laughs> I was Jesus like, Jesus Christ! Well, if I was like, what the fuck? You should have fought them. Yeah. I at that point I was just like, just going to Staples. I'm and I was, <laughs> I'm a little worried. Sounds like you don't have war mode in you anymore. No, dude, I just don't want to deal with two homeless dudes throwing trash at each other. Yeah, yeah but, you, you were a bystander, but I feel like yeah, you have to stand up for yourself. Collateral damage. Yeah. No, I just wanted to get out of there. You let another man put juice on your face? And then I had to, like, go to the store, buy mouthwash to, like, clean out my mouth. So you did. Anybody. You got okay, juice. It sounds like Billy got it on his face, and he absentmindedly stuck his tongue out and tasted it. Yes. Is that what happened? And then you're like, oh, fuck, why did I do that? It, uh, yeah. It just makes me want to... Yeah. Thinking about it, Ugh. yeah, it's too bad. It was Gross. bad. Gross. It was disgusting. You think it was piss? I have no idea what was in that trash jizz? bag. Juice, piss, it was jizz, disgusting. meth, tomato juice. Terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, any recap, Billy? Nope. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. I'm not. I didn't ask that as like a mean insult to ask. That wasn't an insult question. All right, numbers. Give me eight. Show 97. me eight. Ninety-seven. Ninety-six. Eighteen. Six. Kangaroos and whales are both mammals that can replace their own teeth. Nope. 72. Ooh. 72. I feel like we've had that one before. 72. Just the one timer. Oh, just okay. the one timer. After the 47 thing the other day, it's like, I don't really get my juices flowing. There's 47, and then there's everybody else. 47's yeah. a blue blood. He really is. He really is. Love you guys. Why is Jay Williams trending? Can oh. we lock? Did they found the hack, the hacker? I think they got a new podcast. Bald, bald man on campus. <laughs>